Hello. Hey everyone. Hey. How's everyone going? Hey everyone. Hey everyone. How's How are everyone you? doing? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. You're thank welcome. you. We sent <laughs> <laughs> we sent uh, the paintings sent paintings out this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have some paintings to uh, to ship, mm -hmm. but like we always say, we are at the mercy of the uh, Ministry of Culture and the permits that they give out. So, you know, that we don't, um, uh, we we can't control that times. control those times. Yeah. So yeah, so that that's why the, our safest bet is always to do shipping um, once once a week. Mm -hmm. You know, because we never know if it's going to take four more days or two more days In or six more days. I mean. We would be going every day to the post office, and that's not... Uh, yeah, to send, like, one. Yeah. Yeah, and that... That's not, like, effective. No, I mean. honestly, it, you know, it's probably, like, a, you know, 30-minute walk, and then walk back, and then staying there, and sometimes when there's, like, a crowd there, it could probably... I think there's been times that we've been there, f like, two hours, maybe. Yeah. So, if when we need to work, which is around every day... <laughs> around... Um, mm -hmm. We, we'd be losing like a lot of time yeah. um, d doing that. So I'm going to start doing something like for now. It's not like a super important, um, you know, it's it's not as if I'm painting. I mean, I am putting paint on my substrate. But what I'm doing is ensuring that my painting is going to be, in this case, ochre dominant. Mm -hmm. It's going to be yellow dominant. Okay. And... I have a feeling we did this for some other paintings, but I forget. But something tells me that we already did this. This is a almost like surefire way of um, just physically putting yourself in a space that is going to affect every decision that you put on top. Now, granted, you can start to put so much paint on top that you obliterate that first layer of paint. And, um, you know, it, it becomes pointless. But if you are going, if you're going to paint naturally on top, of, um, on top of this, you know, thin layer of paint, um, chances are that this, you know, this bit of ochre and white is going to affect every single thing you put on top. And especially it's going to be super effective if you're going to do mixing also on the surface. So what I want is to make it super, super clear that this is an area of the palette that we can investigate and we can make it foolproof yellow uh, ochre dominant. Mm -hmm. And what I'm planning on doing uh, to close the week out tomorrow is to do a raw sienna dominant. Okay. And then I think if we have the two of them, we're going to really, really feel... You know, yes, in the extremes, but we're going to feel the the obvious difference that there should be between the two uh, pigments. Mm -hmm. I think this is a sort of playful, um, very, very, you know, simple way of understanding how much a color affects the other colors, mm -hmm. which is, if you think about it, it's the way it kind of should be at some point in your understanding of the color, you know, in yeah. that trajectory where you try to comprehend a single color in your palette. This is almost like this would be the equivalent, not not a perfect equivalent, but if you again, if you want to be playful about it, this would be the equivalent of doing one of those charts of those oh, color yeah. charts. Yeah, because it's a way of understanding the relationship of the color with the other colors. Exactly. Of the palette, so. so this way, while you uh, crack open your beer, a cold one, <laughs> beer. It's a little early. No, for, it's uh, water. It's water. Any, but, Sparkling um, water. <laughs> uh, no, but this this would be. Yeah, this would be like applied. I'm applied sorry, I'm sorry. no don't worry <laughs> applied um color theory let's say applied an applied color chart let's mm -hmm. call it that mm -hmm. so we're going to force this color um as our dominant color you know we're going to push ourselves to really really acknowledge it and like i said the easiest way to do it is just by saying well let me put like a big layer um not super thin you know, if you're noticing what I'm doing, this is, yes, an absorbent surface, which means that, you know, a lot of the um, 
paint is going to be separated. A lot of the oil is going to be, you know, kind of absorbed by the uh, substrate. But there's still going to be like a clay-like, you know, um, sand-like. Uh, uh, that's a very sandy color. It looks really nice. Uh, sand-like uh, layer of color there that we're going to paint into. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be nice. I don't know if you remember that I had a... Sand? No. For lunch? I had a UPO paper prepared with ochre too. Oh, dude. For you, my correspondence. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what color it was. I thought you had mixed like um, yellow orange, like no. a darker yellow orange. No, it wasn't. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. But it, no, but <laughs> I couldn't use it. That oh. was my first attempt. But oh, okay. I couldn't use it. But I was like, it's just uh, cool to see that you're using that today. Yeah, connected. Just remind me of that. Yeah. Good, yeah. good, good. I and hope this doesn't mean that yours uh, turned out as mine did. Because I had to. I haven't seen yours, but I'm No, not no, no. No, because I had to change what I was doing. Oh, okay. But I think it was uh, because of the Yubo, not because of um, the color I used. So. Hmm. Okay. Well, if do you have a lot of Yupo? Did you buy like a whole pad? Yeah. Yeah, I did. It was my first try with Yupo. So it takes a little bit. Yeah. For me, it took like a little bit too. Also. Yeah. I I'm think we did two set, two different. No, I was gonna say two weeks, which would mean ten paintings. But I think we have more. More. Th maybe. More than that. Maybe because you used all the block, the like the paper block. Yeah. You're, you yeah. Bought. You're right. So I think that's like twenty. Yeah, I think it's twenty. Twenty sheets. So. So. Yeah, but I'm trying to be super uh, vague because I don't want to tell. Yeah, about don't tell what me I was more. Doing. Yeah, don't tell me more. No, no, no. The only thing I was going to talk about the. Um, what if I paint a dog over here? <laughs> oh, I. Yeah. That looks like uh, a dolphin, though, like a Simpsons dolphin. It's super cool how just the color makes you think of the reference oh, of yeah. the painting. Oh, there's. I think until the day I die, yeah. I'm going to uh, remember that painting. Yeah. No, but I was going to say that I think uh, my struggle was with uh, the Yupo because yeah. I use water, a lot of water. And I don't know what I was doing wrong. I have to, like, try to mm. use it more to try to understand it more. But I was... W did, were you using a, uh, acrylic gouache? Or yeah. Or were you using... Yeah, acrylic gouache. And mm. I was sort of layering paint on top of paint and it mm -hmm. was lifting the paint yeah that's why so I'm, that's that's very peculiar because acrylic the acrylic part of the of the um acrylic gouache mm -hmm. is it acryl gouache or acrylic gouache i forget what the well, brand is i actually. found it is acryla acryl acrylic gouache. gouache okay but i think that's or the acryla, brand yeah okay but so i'm guessing the the I mean, s maybe someone out there that uses it more than us, uh, or maybe someone can Google this while we're talking. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that the acrylic part uh, is the part that makes gouache feel a little more, um, I don't want to call it permanent, but that it doesn't, you know, y you lower the possibility of lifting paint because... Um, Gouache, I'm guessing gouache is, is, is gum, right? Well, I'm, I'm doing a lot of guessing here mm -hmm. with the, um, what the vehicle for gouache is. But, um, so, it, but if it's an acrylic resin, it should transform. And if it does transform, there is a, a lower risk of lifting, you know, the, uh, the under layers of paint. So. Yeah, you're right. It is, uh. Gum? Pigment, water, and a uh, binding agent, usually mm -hmm. gum. There we go. So and it's Arabic or dextrin. Right. So, yeah. so, so because it is gum, you can always dissolve it. Mm -hmm. Like gum is like, you know, th you can always get it back to that original um, state. Yeah. The weird I thing guess it is depends on the pigment, how, you know, some may become more brittle or dry faster or, or, or some are a little more flexible. But... Gu but uh, gouache you can get back mm -hmm. like you could lift a whole gouache painting if you take a rag you could lift it up not off the paper it would stain the paper but let's say if it's on a um oh yeah you a can non-absorbent su surface you easy. could clean it you could clean it you could yeah. just clean it 
to you know to the original surface mm-hmm. um you can't do that with acrylic so acrylic will transform so I'm, I'm i'm very curious why you feel that it picks up because then no but but i think it has to do with the upo because uh i was like experimenting yeah and you can use an eraser and you yeah. go back to the like the paper like you don't it doesn't leave any mark right it doesn't but matter but like the acrylic wash acrylic wash wow so what it doesn't leave a pigment doing there so i think What's it has to do the with acrylic? the upo because the upo never receives well, yeah it's the not painting, a, it's so. not absorbent because I mean, I've, I've layered a lot of uh gouache in yeah. other paintings yeah and it's sometimes hard but you can do it it's yeah, not like you can't right right and, and with an absorbent surface like yeah for sure that's going to be way more difficult but but paint shouldn't you you i mean if acrylic it's, is doing its job if the acrylic part the acrylic resin hmm. then the paint should just transform and it should make it way more difficult for you to lift it unless you're not being super patient and it hasn't dried yet no but i was and i don't know if you remember because i prepared that paper from like two weeks ago and and that 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 was was lifting oh yeah like i was back to white the white oh, of the Yupo. The, yeah, the kind of transparent plasticky yeah. color. So. Oh, that's actually really weird. Yeah. Because that's that, why I'm you, telling you. you had like that I for went like a week lying Yeah. Around. It was oh. super dry. So. Yeah, that I wouldn't be able to explain. Or my explanation would be, I have no idea <laughs> how, how strong the acrylic um, binder is. Yeah. Because then what's the point of having acrylic there? It serves nothing like handling in terms of handling. Yeah, maybe it makes it so that um, it just feels more like an acrylic paint, just a little flowy Mm -hmm. Uh, gouache, you know, gouache when it's fresh, it feels flowy. But then as it's drying and it dries very quickly, um, you have to water it constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I was super lost. I wish those companies could, you know, you could write to those companies like, hey, Help could you me. let us know like <laughs> what the acrylic is doing here? Because could you re- could you look for acrylic like what the um what, the what would what? that be? I mean that's kind of hard to find now. Like the the technical the tech spec sheets. What's how do I technical even specification tech acrylic specs? Yeah, tech specs yeah. of acrylic gouache. Of acrylic. Let's gouache. see if if we find something. Just want to know what the acrylic does, because if it's not doing anything, mm. it's like why put acrylic then? Mm. No. I see. What's the difference between gouache and acrylic gouache? And who's answering that question? Like people or the company? Marlowe's <laughs> Devires <laughs> blog. Okay. What what do they say? Let's 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 have a hear to what the, they have to say. The Vries or yeah, the Vries. Marlowe's the Vries. Yeah. I think it's Yeah. Cuz so I was trying to read it from the web page. Oh, that's fine. That's so fine. But what, what what do they say? Let's see. Mm, wow. I mean, a lot? No. 8 pages? Yeah, a lot, but see the collection they have. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, maybe they send them to them. Um they say these paints are not like regular gouache. Mm-hmm. It's made by Holbein. Okay. Holbein, I'm sorry. Holbein, yeah. An art materials company based in Japan. Mm. What? Yeah. Holbein is Japanese. Oh right, yeah, they do come in Japanese. Um, I I thought you know for some reason they were producing something in Japan, but I thought they were like German or, anyways. It is acrylic gouache is basically a mixture of acrylic paint and gouache. Unlike gouache, acrylic gouache cannot be reactivated by water right. once it has dried up on your palette. Right, and if it can't... It's also much faster in drying uh, right. through its still water soluble while wet. It dries up more matte and opaque compared to gouache. Right, and it's water resistant. That's what it's... What? It's curious. Right, because because if I was part, using gouache, no, yeah, but I y- would get right. that it would lift. 
Yeah, but, but the Yupo part, I, you have to believe me, it's, it's not important here because the, the absorbency of the paper doesn't change the chemistry of the paint. Yeah. It has nothing to, one thing doesn't have to do, anything to do with the other. So the paint, regardless of what you put it on top, if it's not soluble in water after it has dried, it won't dry regardless of this. It, like you won't be able to reactivate it or to dilute it um, with water regardless of where you paint it on top, regardless of your substrate. So that is very strange yeah. unless they're doing something. Or maybe I'm doing something weird. I don't think. What are you doing weird? No. I don't know. But yeah. Did you mix it like with other no, gouache no, or no. like? They're like even brand new. Do you think you I used just way too them. much paint? May no. Way too much water maybe? Mm-mm. When you did this? Mm. Maybe. But then again, but it, it shouldn't matter. Like if I did a, a thin layer of acrylic and it dried. Oh, but maybe that's it. Yeah. You know what? You know what it is? I think it's that. Because if you suspend, like, you know, the molecules of, of whatever paint you use, like, if you're stretching them super thinly, water can be like a great or oil or whatever, you know, vehicle you use. But it can be wonderful because it just spreads the color nicely. Mm-hmm. But the space between those, you know, it's pigments, water. The, the, the molecules of pigment... It's way too big and mm. it can only be and all the space in between them has to be the vehicle. So um, that space is water. Mm-hmm. And if there's not enough, you know, and if you've spread it so thin that there's not enough binder in the paint yeah. to keep those two molecules like together, like tightly bound, all the stuff that's in the middle, it's going to lift. Maybe that gonna was be water. the thing. Cause you saw the. Um, but I don't. I don't have it super clear in my memory. Like I probably saw it and I said, "Yeah, you put." Cause like I had a, it on the living room. You put a ground on yeah. it. Like that's what I would. Yeah. I thought. Oh, you put like a, a tone. You toned a uh, a piece of, um, a piece of yupo, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. The thing is that, like, I have to learn a little bit more about um, acrylic wash. Because I wasn't used to y- using it. So I was treating it like I'm still treating it as I treated uh, gouache. Right. Maybe I have to read a little bit more. But you know what? Best way to do it is by painting. Yeah. You know, there's th- you can read a thousand things on acrylic gouache and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it, it, it it's only going to make sense um, when you paint it. So I yeah. think, but that, but I think my, my, a uh, blind but uh, educated guess would be that. Because no other option would make sense. Yeah. There no, because be I even remember I had a palette. Yeah. And I didn't clean the um, acrylic gouache. Oh, was it? Yeah, maybe it was acrylic gouache. And now, like, it's a pain to clean it. I haven't cleaned it. I yeah. have it there. But I can't. I mean, and in my mind, I was like, oh, maybe it's uh, gouache. I'm going to pour a little bit of uh, warm water because that's yeah. why I always, what I always use. And nothing happened. Yeah. So, yeah, once once it dries, it's water repellent. So. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, very strange. Oh, wait. I think I have to close did you open the, a window? Yeah. I had the one of the living room kind of open. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because, you know, these days, all of these days, it's uh, rained up quite a bit. So I'll just say what I'm going to do uh, while, you, while you go do that. Um, so I'm thinking of doing like an oversized uh, du buffet portrait, which I think fits very nicely with this kind of earthy undertone. Um, and I don't know if I should just go really, like, really, really large, like large enough so that, um, we don't see the contour of the face, which could be kind of interesting now that I think about it. We should do that. It, it, I think it's going to look like a, like a Luke, uh, Toymans, Luke Toymans. I hope I'm saying that right. There's any, uh, Dutch people out there. Um, please correct me. Um, 
I think I think this would be kind of interesting. And we should and we could leave that. Uh, although that ear is so yummy. But it's too buffet, so I think we could acknowledge some of his um, geometry uh, when doing this. I think that that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that in honor. You know what? I was I was looking at the uh, du buffet. I opened those tabs for, yeah, for you. Yeah, let me share them. Yeah. So the du buffet foundation one? Yeah. First or because uh, I don't know if you want to talk about one or the other. Oh, you so could put you could put the both of them. I'm I, oh, okay. some pe I'm I'm sure uh, some people are familiar with du buffet, and uh, for the people that are not, like I'll speak a little bit about him, but. Um, and could you go back to, uh, let me see, not the art brute. Could you go back to bio, to the bio, mm. biography? It's in life, life bio. Life, biography. Maybe chronology, yeah. Chronology? Maybe that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you read, like, the 1924 one? I think it's 1924. So he was, like, 23 at that point, right? He was, he was born 1901. 1901, yeah. It okay. says, eh... Uh, uh, doubts the value of culture stops <laughs> painting this will last eight years lives for buenos aires when he stays for four months don't Where you love that 1924 months. doubts the value of culture, of culture yeah <laughs> that's that's just and and this is the uh official du buffet you know the, the, yeah, the foundation the yeah. foundation so I I just I don't know why, but I just absolutely loved that. That that's the description of the year. Yeah, that, I mean, that's in the my value chronology, I would just go like you know, twenty twenty one, played Cuphead. Yeah, you know that was in twenty twenty one. We finished it now. We finished it in twenty twenty. I feel yeah. yeah. Uh, but but I love that something so enormous <laughs> can be expressed in like. You know, what is it? Four words? Doubts the val doubts the value of culture. Five words. Yeah. Doubts the value of culture. The values of culture. Values? Yeah, values. That's amazing. Yeah. He's like, no, not just one value, all of all them. Of, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I don't know if you could get away with saying something like that today. It's like you could get crucified by saying culture sucks. Culture has no value or has no values. <laughs> Like, what does that mean? Like, people that, you know, nowadays you champion culture. You always think, like, cha you know, if it wasn't for culture, we would be animals. And um, I just adored. I mean, he was 23. So, you know, a young mind is always um, effervescent. And it's always, um, I think we're always, at least when I was 23, I was very keen on on saying stuff that, you know, sounded super grand, but it was very, yeah. very empty. But uh, but I love it. Like in the context of Du Buffet, that would later, you know, help, you know, shape this thing that that is art brute. Um, it makes sense. Like it, he was seeing. I guess his definition of culture was just this um, this holding on to as if culture were like branches, like classical branches, because it's a very classical definition of culture too. But it, it's as if they were branches that he was like very sad that we had to hold on to those branches mm -hmm. to try to, you know, redefine or, or mistakenly redefine or almost like impossibly redefine things like in, in that contemporary culture. Because what you would always end up doing is just um, iterating uh, and perpetuating those kind of same classical beliefs and, and that same system. So... You know, I, I'm guessing this was a way of, of just dramatically saying, I'm opposed to that. Like, I don't want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and that made way to Art Brute, which is, would you mind reading in one of the tabs just for this people? One? Uh, no, the other one? Collection. No, because the other one's the Du Buffet. Yeah, Foundation. you can just go back, like press back on that and you'll probably go back to the one that you were. Yeah, there we go. Uh, if you could read, you could read the first quote, and then in the th uh, fourth paragraph, do you see it? The larger one, mm -hmm. what's on italics? Maybe okay. if, if like the other quote. Yeah, could you read that if you don't mind, Danny? Okay. Please, thank you. Well, I. Start. I hope I don't um, misread. Nah, you're gonna do amazing. 
because I don't have my glasses. So <laughs> that's the excuse. But okay. Uh, you can the do first with French one says too. art du does buffet. not just lie in bed. We made for it. It would sooner run away than say its own name. What it likes is to be incognito. Its best moments are when it forgets what its own name is. And the other one. So that one speaks about like a trying to categorize something, like trying to apprehend art mm -hmm. and how much he believed that art hates that. Like I'm super, I always, I'm not always in tune with Dubuffet, but I adore a ton of things that he believed in. And um, I think you've heard me say how I just don't like categorization. I really, really don't. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I, I get super um, nervous when we try to fit art into, you know, these pre-established molds that we've worked so hard to control. Um, I don't like that. So he was trying, I guess he was trying to say, you know, art doesn't fit into those things and we should stop doing it because mm -hmm. he was trying to seek art that came from other places. Mm -hmm. So you know, marginal art and art that was uh, done by uh, people with uh, schizophrenia and, and um, people that were in the spectrum and people that, you know, they, they uh, you know, back then, a century ago, they would just say mentally ill pe people, mm -hmm. you know, art that was produced by mentally ill. They didn't have enough knowledge to try to understand what, um, what all these human beings uh, were trying to do, but mm -hmm. they kind of, you know... Um, group them in, in just mentally ill people, mm -hmm. as mentally ill people. But he was trying to find his way to say, well, that is also art, and I'm going to champion that art. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I can't call that art if I try to do it through the definition of art, that through the, you know, the classical yeah. definition of art. I mean, I'm going to hate saying this, but it's almost like what Ner Nerdrum tries to do with Kitsch, saying, when he's saying what I do is not art, it's kitsch, because if I say it's art, it falls under th that definition of art that also encompasses modern art, which he absolutely hates, and contemporary art, which he hates, um, which he sees like a villain or, or responsible for destroying like the values of traditional art. So I'm not into that. Like, I, I think that that's honestly garbage. But um, but I think what, what Dubuffet was doing was... was um, hoping that something that was clearly at that moment understood as, as being, you know, completely outside the realms of the consideration of it, of it being understood as art, to bring it and say, no, this can be shown at a gallery, this mm -hmm. can be shown at a space, like an exhibiting space, and this is also art. It is as much art as anything we'll see in any museum, in any salon, in any academy. It's exactly the same. So, yeah. So, and, and could you read the, um, yeah. the other one? So it says, it's how Dubuffet defines the concept of art brut. And it says, by this we mean the works executed by people free artistic culture. Where mimicry, contrary to what happens among intellectuals, has little, little or no part. So that their other draw all subjects, choice of the use of materials, means of transposition, rhythms, ways of writing, etc. of their own heart and not clichés clichés yep, yep. of classical art or fashionable art. We assist them in all pure artistic operation, raw, reinvented in the whole of all its phases by its other from only his own impulses. Art so that the only function of the invention is manifested and not those Constance in cultural art, cam chameleon and monkey. So, that's that's like. I'm sorry for my super paused. No, uh, no, reading. no, 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 no. And and if we could leave that for people if they want to read it, that's that's awesome. But, um, so what he was again championing was something that's kind of hard to to understand because when he says like. Oh, art that doesn't come from like history, that doesn't come from like this iteration, this um, glorification of classicism, but art that comes from the human being, mm -hmm. like that it has no ties to anything, mm -hmm. you know, except the, you know, interior of this human being. 
the most uh, you know subjective thing of all, and the most incomprehensible thing of all. Like, how do you understand that? How can you express that? That's so difficult, right? It's almost as difficult as when you know you're you're attempting to paint and you you go like. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. I'm kind of lost. And somebody tells you, oh, just you do you. It's like, what is that? What? I, I don't know what that means. Like some people spend their whole lives trying to understand who they are. And and for art, it's almost like, yeah, you know, you're going to do that through your, throughout your whole life. But we actually need some of that to apply it to art. You need to showcase that in art. You know, that attempt to try to find who you are. We need that you know, configuring, you know, images or sculptures or, you know, assemblages or whatever it is that you're doing. So it's very hard. It's very tough to, um, to understand. But I, th I guess his, his whole idea was, um, was solidified by, by all the exhibits. I mean, those exhibits at the time must have been like, this is absurd. Absolutely absurd. Like, this is crazy. What an idiotic endeavor to say that, you know, think about it. This was early, you know, early 20th century when just um, modernism is starting, when the peak of academic painting, the peak of all of, you know, Renaissance, um, uh, Baroque painting, uh, you know, Romanticism, uh, all of it, classic neoclassicism, all of it just kind of came to this, you know, the apex of painting, which is like the, the last couple of decades of the 19th century. And all of that was just incredibly powerful and it was erupting into what was going to be, you know, every, every one of these like smaller movements that, that spurred in the uh, beginning of the 20th century that took painting everywhere, everywhere. So imagine thinking... Yeah, we don't fit into any of that. Hmm. We are doing something completely different. Like, how weird could that be? Like, you know, Matisse was painting in the, you know, early 20th century. Picasso was painting in the early 20th century. Imagine doing something that would feel like it was on the outside of all of those things that were just pushing all the boundaries. And what Dubuffet was uh, trying to understand was like, yeah, we don't even fit in those boundaries that are like expanding and expanding and expanding. It was, it's pretty fascinating. It's really, really amazing. Whew. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, and let me share the other one. This one. Do you want me to share it? Oh, yeah, because that's the foundation. That's the uh, collection of the foundation. Yeah. yeah, that's super cool, too. There you go. Uh, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hey, Robin. Robin was saying, love Dubuffet. I adore him. I know, I know you do. Um, Dubuffet has the, um, Fer's, uh, hairbrush, which is like, am I, am I, mm. I mean, you can't even do an ode to Dubuffet. Like, how could you, how can one do that? I think that Dubuffet can be, you could yell Dubuffet when you're trying to just let go. Like, let go, almost like the cleansing of your brain. And you're just saying, let me see what happens if I just completely let go, which we all know that it's impossible. Like, completely yeah. letting go of something, especially something that you've learned, it is highly improbable. Let's call it that. Um, but to me, that, that um, th the little bit of lack of control that I had trying to paint that, that brush um, just was very... In my realm, it put me in tune with Dubuffet. In my realm. Yeah. It, it does not mean clearly that I was going to be able to do anything close to what he did. I mean, he, he, he dedicated his whole life to try to, you know, uh, kind of exact that detachment. But I don't, you know, I, my path has taken me elsewhere. But, but um, I think it's impossible for, for me to uneducate myself so freely so quickly so yeah. 
And with but just it, one painting. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, be... we've always been super conscious of that, that one painting is never enough. Will yeah. never, ever be enough. So, but, but it's, it can be a necessary and very, ba very, very valuable beginning. Yeah. So. Robin said, you were awfully close. <laughs> Liad said, "But would Du Buffet have a completely funded Kickstarter book <laughs> that is still open for backing?" <laughs> so, oh, we gotta start paying you, yeah, <laughs> Liad. We gotta start. We, you're hired. <laughs> so, mm, now that I see Leah's Liad's interest, I'm gonna yeah, share. Fun funny you mention it, uh, yeah, Liad, because we have. What what do we have? We aside have from a Kickstarter. A, aside from a kick-ass um, TikTok uh, channel that is oh. exploding. I mean, we are. Let me. I don't know if I can read that number. Is there a number? <laughs> is that that can express the the number of followers that we have on TikTok? I would only say it's an abstraction, really. Thirty-two. To the what? To the. I don't know to the a hundredth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thirty to we're thirty. We are, yeah. I mean, that it's a it's a slow build up. I think we're growing in the same way. You know how you could boil a frog. You know that that urban legend thing that you could boil a frog without it noticing that you're boiling it. Oh yeah, that have you ever heard when that? it boils they die, but they don't realize they burn. Yeah, burning. because you're doing it so so slowly, like one degree at a time. Yeah, that they don't know. Yeah. They're Yeah. So that's how quickly we're growing. And we're going to get burned? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a TikTok. But I'm sorry. Uh, no, you were no, talking yeah. about a... a, a um, no, but I'm just going to say quickly, oh. we have a TikTok. Oh. If you want to go check it out. Yeah. It, our account is our, oh, our Painted Lives. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's full of content. Like, you know. Uh... That's amazing. We could talk about Let's that say, another day. That's yeah. totally fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a video, but behind that video, mm -hmm. there's uh, 400 videos. So it okay, is, it is from a lot of content. So in And theory, there's 400 videos. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And I was gonna say. Yeah. We have a. Uh, Kickstarter campaign. Wow, that's actually Yeah, uh, we have a book coming up. Oh. So tell the me campaign more. is still open. Oh, how many days uh, are there left? Let me check. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there You're fired. are is 32 hired. No, I thought 30, but no, 32 days to go. Oh. So a little bit over a month. So you have a little bit over a month to Yeah. Check it out and maybe support it if you want to, if you can. Yeah. So let me put this. New book campaign. You should have that like in a Word yeah. document and just, you know, control C, control V. No, because when I type it, I can make uh, everyone know what I'm typing. Maybe they don't read the comments I leave. But they're listening to the video. Oh, so, so I'm maybe you just like copy paste and then just go <laughs> click, clack, clack, click, 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 clack. New book campaign is live. Uh, check it out. And happy face. There you go. Nice. And let's pin that comment. Yeah. So everyone can check it out. So thank you for your interest, uh, stranger that stranger. Uh, has never expressed uh, interest. What was their name? I forget. You know, it's uh, it sounded. Oh, um, Leah. No, I wouldn't. Goldberg, I, I think. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't. Um, I I wouldn't think that I know how to pronounce um yeah. their first name. So I think it's the first time I see. Never seen uh, that this person, person before. Here. Hello, thank stranger. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Leah. We can keep these uh, this bit until we finish the uh, the Kickstarter, so we're good for it. Leah said, "32. That's better than me. I have one follower. I only have one post, but it has 640 views. That's so cool. That is really Ooh. good. So why don't we plug uh, Leah? What is your uh, your TikTok? TikTok? Uh, please. We are here to support each other. 
Yeah. Callum said, don't let this newfound internet fame get to your heads. <laughs> <laughs> Alejandro Morales said, the buffet on that picture looks a bit like Forrest with Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Robin said, 33 now. Woo! So Ooh. we have a new follower. <laughs> Tomorrow we should post like um, super worried, like, hey, guys, our account was hacked. Yeah. We're so sorry. <laughs> We are, hey uh, guys, no, but I don't know if we're going to create a new account. We're so, so sorry. We're going to try to, we're going to make it, you know, everything we can to try to get our account back. But, um, yeah, it's terrible. It's a sad day for us. We lost all, all our advertisers. Yeah. My God. Your mom said, tu mamá dice, yeah. el arte du buffet para mí. Sí, Olgis. Siempre fue como caricaturesco. Tiene, Olgis, sí, sí. Camilo Monroy dice... Eh, ¿Qué onda, Nico y Dani? ¿Cómo va todo? Hoy, hubo, solo puedo quedarme, hoy solo puedo quedarme un poco para hacerles compañía. No, oh, antes muchas gracias, muy agradecidos nosotros. Yo también tengo uno, jajaja, ja, ja, con dos seguidores, jajaja. Ja, ja. Ya también. los agregué, muchas Uy, gracias. gracias. Entonces también, por favor, to todo el que quiera poner eh, su TikTok, su cuenta, por favor, acá. Si podemos colaborar para que todos tengamos 23. ¿Cuántos tenemos? 32. 32 seguidores, lo máximo. Sí, misión cumplida. Claro. Liet said, over, over a month to go, but less than 50 artist books available. Which would be a great opportunity to get a personal commission of a painter of your choice from Nicolás. <laughs> What is Leah talking about, Danny? I, 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 I know there's a, a tier. You know... There's um, a super interesting tier. Now that you mention it, yeah. Leah, let me tell everyone that we have two, only two tiers. So you only can get... Only two? Only two. I'm sure they're both great. They're both absolutely amazing. I'm sure they are. Because the first one's going to be the Possibilities book. Possibilities That's the is title the name of the book? Of the book. That's yeah. a great title. It's an amazing title. I know. So, you will receive a 200-page full-color, hardcover art book. 200 pages? Have you guys ever done a book so long? I think they don't. No, you could, you could say never. Never. Have you guys ever done a book so long? Never. Oh, my God. This is incredible, then. Yeah. Yeah, that's And amazing. And let me tell you, it's an... Is, there's more? 11... 11.2 by 11.2 inches. Oh, my God. That's like coffee table size. Yeah. Oh, my God. The thing that I've been wanting, but I didn't know I wanted. And it's depicting a large selection of images from the first two years of our painted lives. I love our painted lives. I love I love. You know lives. what I love more than our painted lives? The first two years of our painted yeah. lives. I mean, they've gone downhill, but... No. So, and there's, are you telling me there's a large selection of images that are going to be in that book? A large selection, because you have 200 pages book. Oh, my God. So, I you mean. put everything in there. Well, not everything. But and it's a big book. So, it's you're going to have book. super Hefty. good reproductions of the Really images. good reproductions. You can I'm, check them out. I think those guys have like really, those guys, right? I yeah. think they have really nice <laughs> photographs of their uh, paintings. Yeah. So, it's like. You know, a sure thing almost. Yeah. Almost because production, you know, we can't really put our. No, but you know, we know that we're going to do. Hands on the fire for them. That they are going to do an amazing uh, oh, work. We can bet on it. So, so that's the first pledge or tier. Wow. There's a, uh, there's that's a second the book. one. Yeah. And amazing. there's another one that's yeah. called 100 Artist Edition. That's really cool. I yeah, and you know what, what that means? Not really. I, I want can, to hear I can, your guess. You know, I could have. I don't know, you, maybe you gathered like a hundred artists to, you know, paint something no. and then you print it? No? no. It can't be cooler than that. It is way cooler. What? You will receive a 10 by 10 inches portrait. Oil on paper. 10 by 10 portrait. Yeah. That, that already sounds cool. Oil Sign on me unprimed up. paper. Oh, oil on unprimed paper? Yeah, depicting Nicolas' personal specialty. Depicting Nicolas' personal interpretation of, of course. any artist of your choice. Any? Yeah. It can be painter, sculptor, writer, musician. What, what if my pet I mean, monkey... you pick the artist. What if my pet monkey is my favorite artist? Would you paint my pet monkey? We would paint... Um, yes, yes. Your monkey. 
What? Pet monkey. Oh my god, that opens up so many possibilities. So many possibilities. What? That's yeah. amazing. And I mean, you don't only get the painting, but you get the book. You're so it's stop it. a perfect co- combo. Stop it. So I would pay that money for just the painting. I You're mean, telling me 43 uh left. For, for what? How <gasps> Wait, many were there originally? A hundred cuz uh, it's hu- a hundred artist edition. I'll help you out. Fifty-seven, Danny. So fifty-seven have already. What? No, because you said how were how many were there? Uh, there were a hundred. Yeah, but fifty-seven are, f- fifty-seven are already gone. Ah, uh, well, of course. Quick I mean, math. if you take forty-three out. Wasn't of that what you were doing on your phone? <laughs> no, I was looking for our followers because I oh. thought we had forty-three, but no, we no, had, no, 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 we had thirty-four. I thought you were doing math. Uh, uh, no, I wasn't TikTok. <laughs> phone math. No, 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 not for that. I mean, well, but yeah, so that's amazing. I mean, I think everyone should check it out because, oh, because there's also another thing that people ask a lot. Well, this is paper. It's no, from no, a no. moleskin <laughs> no, sketchbook that's, potato. No, 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 about the Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Yes. I was going to say, because there's a lot of people that have been asking us about the possibility of getting the book afterwards. And we want to tell you. There is no there possibility. There is no possibility. So if you lose the chance of getting the book right now, there would not be another I chance. I mean, but that sounds a little FOMO, but I get it, right? Because you're only going to... FOMO gonna PL. <laughs> <laughs> you're only going to print the uh, books that the people want you to That's print, right? right. It, it, That's right. It's very special when you think about it that way. That it's not going to be a book that's like widely available for everyone to buy after the... Uh, the uh, Kickstarter campaign is over. But if there's 280 books, uh, 280 people wanting books, we are only going to print 200. Well, we got to print like 300 because maybe in the shipping, yeah. 15 get you know ruined. But yeah. Um, so, yeah. So only so the, it's gonna the edition be size. Limited edition. Limited edition. Yeah. That, you know, with no every word reprint. you say, no I am sold. Like... Danny, Only can I see your edition. face? Because I want to throw money at it. You can see it on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, guys can tell us to stop, by the way. Because I think we've Sch- gone long enough. Aaron Schmidt said, this is the best self-plug <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> LOL. Liad. <laughs> Liad said, ever since we introduced... The introduction of the new character, Liad, into the third <laughs> year, our painted lives really went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Marcelo Peralta said, and the Oscar goes to <laughs> Danny and Nico. <laughs> hey, it's all real. It is all real. Cody Winicky said, all of my students are jealous of my copies of your first two books. So when I told them about the new book, some of them had to stop and support it right in the middle of the class. Oh. We're all excited here. Oh, uh, if you're not giving so them nice. A's, that's <laughs> not cool. No, but thank you. But yeah, you know, come on. Show some love. Sazan said, love how you capture the expression already. Thank you, Sazen. And um, how you doing? I miss talking to uh, Sazen. He was in, in a Townsend. Um, was it Townsend, Sazen? Or was it... Um, yeah, it was Townsend. In a Townsend... Um, Atelier Yeah, in workshop? a workshop yeah. that we did. And um, Sazen is very fun to talk to. So, Alejandro Morales said, And the best part, it's all in matte paper with great repos. Repos? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, we could stop endless. We could talk endlessly yeah. about all the wonders, you know, that are part, that are going to be part of this book that yeah. doesn't exist yet. Oh, don't get me. Be amazing. Don't get me started. Let, I mean, don't. Really. Yeah. Please. Because I wouldn't stop. I mean, I have about three hours and a half to talk. Left in you? Yeah. yeah. No, I could go more. I mean, 24 hour. Let's do a twenty. Let's book. do another twenty-four hours straight. <laughs> just video. talking yeah. about the book. Just to talk about this. <laughs> mm. 
Gabriel Pozo dice, hola a todos, Nico, hola, Dani Gabriel. y chat, espero estén bien. Con respecto al libro, no me acuerdo sí. si puse mi dirección para el libro. Tra ¿Será algo que les mandamos una sí. vez el Kickstarter? Ah, bueno, esto cierre? es importante. Y lo voy a decir y, en, español, en español, Gabriel, y en inglés. Y en, inglés. Sí. Uh, en español les digo, no se preocupen. El libro antes, y esto Dani y yo ya lo sabemos y ya es como experiencia por lo que ha pasado. Mm, nosotros vamos a mandar un mensaje eh, eh, a los correos, pero pues vamos a ser también súper, súper... Eh, como públicos y, y vamos a decirle a la gente con todos los canales, por todos los canales que tengamos que, por ejemplo, si ya el libro sabemos que va a llegar a Estados Unidos eh, en un mes o en mes y medio, les decimos, oigan, el libro está en camino, confirmen necesitamos que hasta tal. confirmen la dirección, si, si la dirección que pusieron al principio está bien, perfecto, Porque si se, van se a enviar han mudado, si, han, si por favor... Eh, mándenos la nueva dirección o por lo menos eh, estén seguros que eh, en, la, en las post office, muchas veces en las, en las oficinas postales uno puede llenar un, un documento de cambio de dirección para que las cosas que llegan todavía a las direcciones antiguas se reenvíen a las otras direcciones. Eso lo vamos a hacer con tiempo, no, no se preocupen. Ustedes pueden modificar datos también, o nos, eso no, no, sí. no pasa nada. Sí. Se pueden actualizar datos en, en ese tipo de cosas. Lo que Nicolás trata de decir es que una vez empecemos el proceso de envíos... No, antes, pues, mucho antes. No, 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 digo, espérame. Una vez empecemos el proceso de envío... Eh, pues cuando ya las cosas se estén enviando, no podemos cambiar las direcciones. Ah. Por eso les vamos a decir una y otra y otra vez, porque van a tener varios meses para poder rectificar la dirección que tienen o añadir la dirección o cambiar la dirección hasta antes de que se hagan los envíos. Entonces, eh, sí. les vamos a dejar saber 50 mil veces. O sea, va a haber mucho tiempo para que pongan la dirección donde quieren recibir el libro. Sí, porque es muy frustrante para ustedes y para nosotros sí. si la razón por la que no les llega el libro es por un cambio de dirección o porque pusieron, de pronto escribieron la dirección mal uh -huh. y nosotros la única manera que tenemos de guiarnos es escribiendo lo... O sea, es literalmente es control C, control B. O sea, copiar, pegar la dirección sí. que ustedes ponen para, para saber que ni siquiera es que la estamos digitando mal nosotros sí, ni sí, nada, sí. sino que... Estamos escribiendo exactamente lo que están poniendo ustedes. Voy a decir esto en inglés, que esto también sí, es importante. Sí, es súper importante. So, what I was saying in Spanish, um, Gabriel actually asked about uh, address, like shipping addresses, and, you know, how maybe we all get nervous when we, we maybe input it wrong, our address, or maybe there was something missing from the uh, information that we put in our address. Don't worry, uh, before the books are um, are going to be shipped, we'll make sure with every channel available to us. So you have to keep an eye on our TikTok. Um, <laughs> That's we'll our main sure. channel of yeah. communication. We'll only, so. <laughs> we'll, only, we'll only send this the updates uh, through our TikTok channel. No, it's channel. a joke. It's a joke. I mean, because I don't um, know if someone... Maybe it isn't. Uh, <laughs> but we will, we will use all our channels to remind people that if they need to update their address, they can do so. They can do yeah. so... They can do it just by uh, sending us an email and we'll do it uh, for you guys. Or you could do it through the um, Kickstarter, Kickstarter, through your Kickstarter yeah. page. Because so, you can communicate. Yeah. No, we, but we can. We can, like, if we you have can. the... You can. Yeah, I'm oh, saying okay. you can oh, communicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so you guys uh, can do that. And that is aimed at the um, trying, attempting to minimize the frustration of not receiving a book just be because the address was uh, typed wrong or because you guys moved last minute but you forgot about the kickstarter there's a lot of people that back a lot of things and they mm. forget what they back yeah and they just move and or they maybe they don't even uh back a lot of things but just one so they forgot to right to like go to the web page and check the comments or whatever uh, yeah, we're yeah. leaving after the so campaign. We'll, we'll make sure that that everyone is um kept informed of all those uh, stages. Yeah, but we would like to say that uh, we would let you know, like, we're shipping, we're starting shipping this day, so you know that before the date, uh, we we need to have uh, the address, like the correct address for shipping the things. 
Because once we start shipping, we can't change the shipping address. So, no, so yeah. And, and just to give you guys like a, an idea, uh, the way we shipped the first one, the, um, the larger one, the one that's going to be comparable to the one that we're going to do um, right now, um, you could theoretically go to the post office and just, you know, log in 50 books at a time and then the poor person behind the counter has to do you know, pay, like has to register everything and you oh, can pay and the for those. Oh, the people that are in line. And then, yeah, and everyone behind you is going to absolutely hate, <laughs> hate you. Hate you, yeah. So the best thing you could do, especially if you're going to send it through USPS, which is the cheapest but most, you know, it is the most affordable like but efficient. also the most dependable, I would say, yeah. um, service, uh, particularly for um, uh, international shipping. Um you can do you can prepay for your postage so you can use something like stamps.com and i don't know if you guys have you know if they're the americans here have used uh stamps.com but it is something that like if you input something and you say print it charges you already yeah like it debits your account that the money that you know, you have to pay for shipping. Yeah, because that creates the label you have exactly. to put. Exactly, and the label is, is the thing completely, that it, it comes with a barcode, so. it's super legal, it's, you know, it's done and paid for. Uh, they're super cool, and sometimes you can just say, hey, I'm so sorry, you know, could you cancel this label because I, you know, mistyped. I, I remember that doing the uh, first book, I probably messed up, I don't know, around 10 times. But 10 times meant... That it was like almost a thousand dollars, and I explain why, because there is, you know, when shipping that book, the overseas fee for that book was like seventy five dollars, and there were other places like, for example, Australia is many times more expensive. Um, uh, uh, I forget whether the country tends to be like super super expensive, but you know, it's not. Not every country falls under the same like shipping umbrella. So it's not as if, you know, if I'm sending it to Spain from the U.S., it's going to have the same cost as if, you know, we just sent something to Israel today, FedEx, something to Israel. Yeah. And um, Israel was super expensive when compared to other, you know, countries that are um, that are in Europe. So, yeah, so if you mess up that stamp. So when I messed up, like not even typing, just like. I don't know. I had fat fingers and I did something Cause stupid. Because you weren't typing. Because remember, I I copy and pasted I know, everything. and I probably pasted it in the wrong cell. place. You know what happened? In some countries, um, I, I remember this like exactly. Some of the countries would have, like let's say if you're shipping to Norway. Mm -hmm. Like the alphabet has weird letters. And they were fine in Excel. But when I said, but when I went, uh, you know, uh, oh, it's copy cha paste. It changed that. Yeah. The, the stamps.com didn't recognize the characters. So instead of doing whatever, the O with like a little th like thing on top, it just went like, bleh, bleh, it just yeah. spewed no, out I, like I tons of characters. And I was like, oh, fuck. I kind of remember you told me uh, also in Spain one, because it had an ñ or something like, or a tilde. Right, right, I right. Think. Like accents. Yeah. Yeah. So. So when you do that, you're down 70 bucks, 75 bucks. <laughs> so the less we can do that, you know, the, 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 you know, or if we can do that because if we do that because it's our fault, like, uh, yeah, it sucks bad. because, you know, they, they usually go case by case and they'll see, they'll make sure that you're not using the label. Stamps.com will make sure that you're not just saying that you messed up, but then you use the label. Mm -hmm. uh, but that usually takes, I think, a month yeah. for them to like, or maybe more. if they're going to do a refund, they'll do it like in a month. But like I said, if it's our fault, like we can deal with it and it's very frustrating. But, and I know that maybe for you guys, it's it's like, yeah, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. It was just a small mistake, but I just messed up in this part of the address. That's, for us, that's always like, oh. Yeah, because also you're saying yeah. if, we, if we do the mistake when we're uh, filling the information in the stamps.com, but if it has already shipped, like, we can't do anything. Yeah, we would have to, like, if we wanted to be, like, idiots about it, we would have to say, you know what? Your book is already shipped. It's going to be returned. We have to wait until it is returned. It's going to probably take like a month or over a month for it to be returned. 
and after it's returned, we'll try to ship it again. Um, but you're still getting charged. Yeah, that's you know, what I was going to say. It's not as if a book is returned I mean, and you're like, okay, can I have my money back? Like, with that, we would still have to reship your book. And that's, you know, like I said, if it's like $70, $75 uh, on average, it's going to be, you know, if you add those up, it's expensive. So, yeah, we're doing this so that all of us can have like peace yeah. of mind. And so that uh, the people that support the campaign have a lot of time for checking and rechecking and rechecking the address and the info. So, Sazan said, you were also super fun to talk to, Nicolas. I'm doing quite well, although I haven't touched oil paint yet this year. COVID makes it difficult, but at some point I'll come to a live workshop from you, promised. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Have you drawn or, or digital work, Sazan? Cody Winicky was asking, are you using the palette knife to blend edges of brush brush strokes? I can't with that. Of tongue strokes? Brush strokes. It's a, That's a tough one. Brush, brush strokes. strokes. D try not to um, just flow from brush to strokes. Brush strokes. Like, like. I can't. Don't I mean, say that's, the S. No, that doesn't matter. Brush strokes. No, that's a hard word for me. I brush know. strokes. What, what was the one for you? Any. No, no, no. We were talking about that last time. And that I would like dog. What? No, no, no. Hot dog. No, hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand what you were. Oh, just stop it! Yeah. Hot dog. Okay, <laughs> we're stopping. That's actually that's. That, I'm gonna think. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm offended. <laughs> no, because I I thought you were trying to say other thing. <laughs> yeah, but. Okay, we're done here. Your hot dog is yeah. my brush stroke. <laughs> that sounds weird. Even that sounds like dirty. Why? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, before your... Uh, <laughs> My brush stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cody, yeah. That's... Uh, I usually use it more. My, my palette knife. I use it more to either push things together, uh, to, s to make kind of irregular lost edges, uh, maybe to make an edge sharper, a little bit cleaner, just by pushing paint up uh, up to that edge. Uh, what I don't usually do is apply paint with the knife. So, yeah, I, I've kind of found, like, a nice character for that tool within my painting. So I, I know that other people can use it, you know, quite differently. But within my own painting, I think that that's, um, that's, a, nice, that's a nice character. It serves me really well. It, and it serves my, my personality and, and what I'm trying to do with, with paint. So... Yeah, I used to never, I used to never, ever use a, a knife. Bruce Jiménez Peña sí. dice, Hola chicos, tengo Hola. una pregunta. Claro. ¿Cómo manejan la frustración cuando algún dibujo o pintura no les sale como ustedes desean? Hmm. Difícil, ¿no? Sí. Es como, o sea, porque eso es de, eso puede ser de todos los días en, y, en, y de distintos niveles también. No sé, hay veces... O sea, yo, yo siempre quisiera pensar que voy a... Digamos que en esa sesión voy a intentar. O sea, quiero verme intentando lo que, me, lo que más pueda. Y puede que al final de la sesión, pues no, no se pudo. O sea, es, es como eh, el final de esa sesión de trabajo denota que uno realmente está... Mm, o que lo que uno está tratando de hacer está por fuera del conocimiento de uno o que ese momento en el que uno lo está tratando de resolver, pues sencillamente no es como el momento apropiado, por cualquier razón. Puede haber un millón de variables por las que uno en un momento no puede hacer algo y en otros momentos sí. como que sí se dan las cosas. Eh, pero yo tengo la personalidad de que quiero tratar de como de esmerarme lo que más pueda, pero no quisiera que esto sonara como yo sí me esfuerzo. No, 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 no. Esto es como mi... Para mi sanidad mental. Sí. O no, sea, y yo estoy muy de acuerdo contigo. Porque ¿Tú has yo... visto, por ejemplo, cuando no me gusta algo y yo te digo, Linda, no, lo tengo que trabajar Sí, ya. tengo que, sí. Sí, y yo iba a hablar, yo eh, comenté eso hace algunas eh, transmisiones, Bruce, y es que yo antes me frustraba y dejaba lo que estaba haciendo siempre a medias. Porque sentía que no me estaba saliendo, pero al final me di cuenta que no le estaba dando la posibilidad de que la imagen como que se fuera construyendo 
sino que con las primeras decisiones yo ya decía, no, esto está terrible y me frustraba terrible y me ponía triste y como que desde que he empezado como a obligarme a tratar de trabajar y trabajar lo que tú dices, como trabajarle y trabajarle, tratar de buscarle, como diría Nicolás, la vuelta a la pintura o a lo que sea que uno está haciendo, como que creo que esa es la mejor manera es súper difícil, porque además cuando uno está en ese momento mentalmente, uno odia lo que está viendo. O sea, siente que todo está terrible y que está trabajando en algo que está terrible. Pero si uno igual se obliga y trabaja y trabaja y trabaja, eh, yo creo que llega un momento en el que uno como que aprende a manejar esos momentos mejor. Y, e igual siguen pasando un montón, o sea, yo... Todo ah, el tiempo, sí. Sí, yo coincidencialmente ayer tuve un día de trabajo terrible, terrible, o sea... Y cuando llegué a acostarme, Nicolás ya estaba acostado y yo estaba súper frustrada. Y le dije que yo siento, y es algo como lo que estaba diciendo Nicolás, que es como si ayer se me hubiera olvidado dibujar o pintar o lo que sea que estaba haciendo, es que no quiero dar pistas de, de nada. Eh, pero sí, o sea, yo ayer sentía que no me estaba saliendo nada, o sea, quería hacer, digamos, una línea así y la línea me salía así. Eh, quería hacer una mezcla así y me salía terrible, entonces, pues eso siempre pasa, pero pues ayer hice exactamente eso, me frustré terrible y dije, bueno, voy a poder poner un temporizador de una hora y media más, y le voy a trabajar una hora y media más a esto, y lo dejo ahí, y a la mañana siguiente, o sea, hoy me levanté y miré, y pensé si sí podía o no podía seguirle trabajando, pero pero sí, creo que tu comentario es muy eh, ¿Sí? acertado. Pues para todos, todos pasamos por eso. Todos, todos pasamos por Ah, no, por decía eso. tu comentario de ah. lo de trabajarle. Sí, pero tampoco, o sea, yo, yo soy súper cuidadoso de que eso no suene a que para combatir la frustración solo toca trabajar más, ¿no? Hay veces que uno, o, o si uno trabaja muchísimo, entonces como que las cosas van a mejorar. No, yo también me he demorado semanas haciendo una pintura de Dionda. O sea, hay veces no, hay veces no, no, no pasa, o sea, hay veces... Uno se frustra, se frustra y la pintura no es chévere y nunca va a ser chévere. Y de pronto yo he logrado como aceptar que muchas veces hay pinturas que tienen que pintarse porque su función no es la de ser chévere, su función es la, la de enseñarnos. Entonces, muchas veces una pintura con la que uno le va, a la que uno le, le va a pelear incesantemente, pues no... No ter esa, digamos que esa pelea no termina cuando uno conquista la pintura finalmente y dice, lo logré. No, 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 de pronto, de pronto, la, la función en la vida de uno de esa pintura era enseñarle ese, esa frustración, como cómo lidiar con esa frustración. Pero para enseñarle a uno a cómo lidiar con esa a cómo lidiar con esa frustración, pues la pintura no tiene que ser exitosa, o sea, la pintura no tiene que ser bonita, ni acabada, ni nada. Puede ser horrible. Y cumplió su labor. Y fue súper eficiente en, en, en hacerlo. Y, y en últimas para nosotros, pues entonces fue también... Yo siempre he dicho como que uno... Es difícil en el momento, pero uno tiene que terminar siendo súper agradecido con, con ese mm. tipo de imágenes. Entonces, sí, paciencia, paciencia. Sí. Habrá muchas pinturas para que uno después como que pueda decir... Ah, me, me, me saqué como ese, ese clavo que tenía ahí eh, encima, de encima, por pues que, que se me enterró cuando traté de hacer esa pintura que, que me frustró durante tanto, tanto tiempo. Habrá muchas pinturas, entonces también tener, aunque es súper difícil, tratar de tener en ese momentico un poquitico más de perspectiva, de paciencia y, y ya. sí. Bruce dice, me está pasando eso de querer dejar lo que estoy pintando en las primeras decisiones. Y sí, no, pues si ese es el caso, Bruce, eh, mi consejo, o sea, lo que a mí me ayudó a salir de eso, porque siento que me pasó por mucho tiempo, que de verdad empezaba algo, me frustraba y lo dejaba, empezaba otra cosa, me frustraba, lo dejaba. Y nunca dejaba lo que estaba diciendo antes, como que la imagen 
se construyera porque no le estaba dando la opción, no le estaba dando el tiempo que necesitaba la imagen para estar yo contenta, contenta con lo que estaba viendo. Entonces yo sí creo que es muy bueno uno decir, bueno, eh, puede que esta sea la peor pintura que he hecho en mi vida, pero le voy a seguir trabajando y voy a seguir haciéndole y haciéndole y haciéndole y haciéndole a ver qué forma coge. Lo que dice Nicolás, de pronto, pues, coge una forma terrible y es horrible, pero pues igual... Siempre uno aprende algo del tiempo que le invierte uno a pintar. Entonces, eh, sí. Iván Sánchez dice, ¿Buenas de qué comida están hablando hoy? Oh, today it seems to be Wednesday, serious day. Is this the real painted life or is this just fantasy? <laughs> hoy no hemos hablado. Hoy no, no, no. Hoy estamos llenos. ¿Sabes de qué hemos hablado? ¿Nicolás? Del libro, pero Ay. uy, yo creo que el beat no podemos, no, no. Era un chiste para no, que No dijeras. sé si podemos seguir. Eh, sí, no, hemos sí. hablado del, del libro, del libro. <ríe> Liad said, hot dog and strokes in the same sentence sounds dirty to me. <ríe> mm, but it's, yeah, it's good to know. Um, you also have a word that's complicated. Oh, many, many, tons of them. For me, it's uh, brush strokes <laughs> and uh, tongues. But because I... No, if you think about it, it always comes yeah. out okay. No, but if I think about uh, brush, brush strokes, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I mean, I don't know why it's so hard. And it's terrible because you you don't say hot dogs a lot in the um, stream. No, but we're in a painting. Not usually. But we're in a painting stream, so there's a lot of people asking for for the brush strokes. Oh, uh, just do. say decisions. <laughs> but it's gonna sound more sophisticated. Sarah S. said, Hi, Nico and Dani. Missing the Rome workshops. Maybe maybe there in June. Sandra forever. Haha. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, super cool. Maybe, like, I'm hoping to be there for the first time because I've never gone to Rome. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, um, those workshops are so cool. And, I mean... They are cool because you're we're painting, but um, let's be honest. Like the coolest thing is also just Rome. You know the fact that you, you know, we we went out and there's a bunch of museums. Food is great. Um, just streets are amazing. People are kind. Uh, it's a uh, yeah. That city is something else. Fabio Castrillón dice, saludos para ustedes, ¿qué costo tiene el libro? ¿Qué costo tiene el libro? Eh, que alguien ya te me lo, lo diga. Igual, espera, espérate porque quiero linkear, linkear. Mm. A ver. Eh, acá está Fabio el link, pero pues te contamos por acá. Eh, hay dos, eh, ¿cómo se llama? ¿Recompensas se les llama? Como dos opciones, se puede sí. el libro que cuesta 100 dólares más el envío y se puede la de la edición de 100 artistas, donde Nicolás pinta un artista eh, de la del que de... ustedes quieran, sí, en un, un papel de 10 por 10 pulgadas. pulgadas y ese cuesta 500 dólares más el envío. Igual ahí te ahí linkeé por si quieren mirarlo. Está abierto por 32 días más, por si quieren mirarlo. Ay, y Fabio, mm. ayer miramos las eh, los, los dibujos, dibujos de, de Jerónimo. Link, sí, Link y ya, un Koopa. A ver, trata de ¿Sí es un Koopa? No, un Koopa. Es que yo me, me olvido de si los honguitos son los Koopas o un Goomba. Ay, no puedo volverlo a ver Koopa. porque se desapareció la imagen. Sí, es Koopa Trupa. Ah, sí, es Koopa Trupa. Sí, sí. Sí. Genial, súper sí, chévere. Sí, muy chévere. 
Yo, para que le cuente a, a su hijo, eh, Fabio, yo, dibuja, yo copiaba los dibujos del catálogo de los juegos de Nintendo cuando yo era chiquito. ¿Sí? Que tenían catálogos. Yo copiaba esos dibujos que venían en los catálogos. ¿Sabes? Yo eh, me estoy acordando de algo que yo intenté... Pues, hacía a veces. Mm. Eh, a mi, mi hermana compraba la revista Tú. Sí. <risa> y... Yo después la cogía y hacía, pues, los quizzes, obviamente. Y eh, a veces hacían como entrevistas de alguien. Sí. Y yo trataba de dibujar a la persona. A la persona. Sí. ¿Sí? sí. O sea, no, es que eso, no importa cuál sea el origen. No, no es que el... No, no, me acordé sí. de eso. O sea, me acordé de haber hecho eso. Y también de tratar de dibujar de los eh, CDs. Como de la cartillita que habían los CDs o en los cassettes. Sí. De esos. Sí. CD. Me acuerdo que me regalaron el CD de Juan Luis Guerra. <ríe> y yo dibujé encima de Juan Luis Guerra. No, bueno. Con Sharpie. O sea, le hice barba. Ah, yo le, le hacía bigote, cosas. pero en la cromos del periódico. Sí, pero lo mío no fue en burla. Según yo, ah, yo no. estaba haciendo yo algo súper chévere. Y, y le quitaba dientes. Sí. <ríe> es tradición. So for now, I love this. I don't know if I'm, I don't know how, how, you know, if I'm going to be able to keep this. But for now, as just like committed strokes for the mouth, I adore this. So we're going to really try to keep them in the end. I don't know. Maybe it's just like caprice right now. But uh, I love it. So we'll see. Gaby dice, yo no sabía que en la revista tú, la que ilustraba era Lorena Álvarez y yo era feliz tratando de copiar su dibujo, jaja. Ay, yo no sé. ¿Tú sabes quién es Lorena Álvarez? Eh, sí, pero no sé. Nunca en mi vida tuve una revista tú. ¿No? Entonces no sé qué... Una revista tú, Lorena Álvarez. No sé, no sé cómo eran las ilustraciones. Mm. No veo. O sea, veo... Todas esas. Sí, sí, pero no de la revista tú. No, la ah, revista no. tú no era así. No. ¿Esa revista existe? Todavía no creo. Yo creo. Sí, porque Lo Lorena ahorita es una genio absoluta. O sea... Es... Sí, pues ahí veo y está súper lindo lo que hace. Uf, Lorena puede ser como la mejor ilustradora colombiana. Mira, yo cogía así y entonces hacía el dibujo de eh, Britney Spears. Eso está chévere. Sí, Lorena, es una barbaridad. Barbaridad. <laughs> What? Your mom said, the mouth, wonderful. Oh, the mouth. Sí, la boca está muy chévere. Bo vamos a ver, vamos a ver si podemos eh, dejar algo ahí. Se me haría muy chévere. Entonces, lo que voy a hacer es como construir de ahí para arriba para no tocarlo de abajo. Vamos a ver. Si tenemos suerte de que funcione. Marciel, Marciel said, You can always move to Rome, just like César Santos did. By the way, who is that uh, old dude, Danny? That's Dubuffet. Jean Dubuffet. Yeah. Gaby dice, la tercera imagen que sale en Google era lo que salía en revista tú. Ella hacía el horóscopo. No sé. De pronto, pero no sé por qué no me acuerdo del horóscopo. De, ¿Cómo de yo leerlo? De pronto no. Mm. De... Ahí sí quedé mal, Gaby. A ver. Yo desde chiquito leía a todos. Todos, me acuerdo desde chiquitico. Y siempre... O sea, pero en el periódico, yo me acuerdo que en el tiempo los, los pasaban, todavía los deben poner los horóscopos, era al lado de las tiras cómicas, uh -huh. eh, y era un poquito más largo en Carrusel, en el, la revista de sí, Carrusel, sí, sí, sí. Eh, los viernes. Y me acuerdo que cuando era más largo, yo leía eh, todos y escogía, y decía, hoy voy a ser Tauro, y ya. <risa> 
Yo también me acuerdo de haber me acuerdo, leído... A Tauro le va re bien hoy, yo que, hoy voy a ser Tauro y ya. Yo me acuerdo de haber leído horóscopos así y me acuerdo de haberlos leído todos y eh, me dijeron que era de mala suerte mm. leer el que no era mío. No. Pero... Es que, pues no sé, tú sabes que yo no... Creo que desde chiquito yo sabía que yo no creía en eso. No. No, yo, yo creo que yo tampoco. Pero creía en el niño Dios, entonces... Ah, yo sea. también, obviamente. ¿Cómo te enteraste que no existía? No, todavía no sé. Yo todavía le escribo carta. Uh -huh. Fabio dice que bien, muchas gracias por la info. Y Jero dice que le alegra que vean sus dibujos. Todos los que nos <risa> quiera lindo. compartir, nosotros felices. Claro. Santiago CG dice, me encanta vuestro canal, aprendo inglés y pintura al tiempo. Abrazos. Gracias, Santiago. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Y horóscopo. Y de comida se aprende. Comida de cada región. Como el bocadillo que es distinto en cada lado. Mm. The, there was someone asking yeah. how to understand that the work is finished. Oh, I'm gonna like today. I was saying um, that I was uh, gonna do something very Luke Toymans. Danny, could you? Because there is a Luke Toymans that I'm super thinking about. That is, you know, it's pretty much this same painting. So I feel bad. Feel bad for um, for just doing a Luke Toymans. Um, not that which one. one? There, there's a lot look, of I have portraits. It. Yeah, but let me see which one. You could put whichever one you feel is like close to kind of like what we're doing today. Um, and Luke Toymans is amazing because he he always solves a painting in one sitting. I mean, oh, you could do this one, Danny. Okay, let me. Mm. It's, I think it was this uh, one yes let's do that one okay if you can find it big or oh, well it bigger it doesn't matter um, yeah so and um, could you also look for uh, Jorge Gonzalez yeah. like big portrait those are amazing too so Danny's gonna post like the two people that I kind of have in my brain right now when I'm doing this um, I I don't know like what I was trying to say by by alluding to these two incredible artists uh, both Toymans and Jorge Gonzalez is that um, you know understanding what it means to to culminate something to to say I'm going to put my brushes down and I feel something is done is very very weird very weird so much so that the easiest way because it is the easiest way to to uh, teach that to somebody is to show you like classical works of art, you know, more specifically, like, let's say more academic works of art, where, you know, eyelashes means that you finished. Uh, the highlight on the eye means that you finished. Uh, the little highlight on your fingernail means that you finished. Uh, little wrinkles means that you finished. Uh, I don't know, reaching, like, uh, tr attempting to paint something that feels like suede or feels like velvet means that you finished. Um, but but the, the, the word finish in art, specifically in painting, means nothing. means nothing. I mean, in all of art. You can take sculpture, too. And, like, for example, if you would look at Michelangelo and you would say, well, the Pietà is where he finished his work. Like, the Pietà is a finished work of art. And if you judge the level of finish in the Pietà, then tons of works, tons of other works of Michelangelo would not be finished, would be unfinished, completely unfinished. So there is no, you know, uh, um, one definition of what it means to say um, that or, or to recognize when something is finished. Ideally, 
the image itself is giving you hints of what it's trying to do. And uh, um, as an observer, you either kind of give in and you say, you know what, I'm willing to play. I'm opening up to possibilities that where what you are presenting to me, I can accept as, as a, you know, as a statement, not just as a proposal of an idea, uh, not, not, not just as an enunciation, but as, but as a statement. And yeah, yeah, you could pick anyone, Dan. Okay. No, because awesome. it's super hard to find just a face. Oh. Because I don't know why you go Jorge Gonzalez and it's not that easy to find. Oh, you have to put Jorge Gonzalez Ilustra. Ilustra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Jorge Ilustra. That's yeah. what I did. Yeah. So, um, but, y you know, wh what I was saying about uh, the observer needing, uh, or you as, as the artist needing the observer to be willing to play, to be a part of, of, you know, this conversation that you are proposing to them. Um, I think that's a huge part of it. Because if not, all of this is like, hey, nice sketch. And in your mind, it's like, when you say stuff like that, hey, nice study, hey, nice sketch, is because in your brain, you're, you're telling yourself, that's not finished. I consider finish a bougaro. But if you consider a bougaro finished, like, there's a ton of Rembrandts that are unfinished then. So if, if Bouguereau is that, that you know, marks the spot where something is finished, like that level of um, execution, then I'm afraid not, you know, there's going to be thousands upon thousands of works of art that are not going to be able to fulfill that, that definition. Um, so best way to understand it and to try to recognize it is, I mean, this is super tough, but um, you can either sense your intent while you, you know, when you start something and that's kind of like your guiding light or you recognize it. Like, for example, I had no idea that I was going to solve this like this, but I like it. I really like it. And I tell you why I like it. It's because everything that um, is configuring those teeth under there, under that upper lip feels very bold and very definitive very very bold and definitive like boldness doesn't have to equate to a ton of paint not at all like you could be very bold with uh, a, a wash of ink so uh but when i saw it i was like i love that i don't know if it's in the right spot i don't know if it's in the if you know Clearly, the teeth are not like that. I know that. But it's, there's such a beastly quality to, to that look that I love this because I think it accentu accentuates everything about, you know, the, the, this head, this look that is um, slowly being kind of um, shaped in this painting. So I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't think anyone can tell you when something is finished. Like, Somebody could come by and say, oh, dude, that's nice, but come on, finish the mouth. Like, and, if, and if in their mind there is just but one definition of how to model a mouth, then everything that's outside that definition is always going to feel like less to them. I think that that's sad because that's almost like us closing ourselves to everything that's, you know, beyond what we have understood to be, you know, the... Um, the appropriate moment a painting should stop. Um, but I, and, and I think with Danny, we share this, but, you know, um, I'd like to believe that there's just, I love when somebody does something that I go like, oh my God, I, I never thought that could be solved that way. Yeah. That, I think, if, if you ask me today, what is the one thing that I enjoy most about, you know, seeing like these thousands of artists in Instagram that are insanely talented? It's not just like if I've seen a cool hand painted, I could see a thousand and they're always going to be cool. Like it's always going to be like, oh, wow, that's a good hand. But, you know, you're going to put it, you're going to file it in that part of your brain when you go like, those are like really well painted hands. But the one thing that like, scrambles my brain is always like when I encounter somebody that does like this hand in ways that I never thought possible like that I always thought oh to do a hand it has to you know, like tick these boxes 
And I, for example, I think of five things. And suddenly, you know, there's this illustrator and she's doing it with two of the things that I thought were uh, necessary. Only two, two of the five. And she does it with two. And I go like, what? You only need a two and it can look so amazing? That blows my mind. But that would never happen, would never ever happen if we all go by the same rules. Like if, we, if, if art was just a big classroom where we all get, you know, um, uh, taught the same, you know, the exact same things and we have the same expectations of our images all the time. Like if you want to um, show me one way in which I would be completely um, um, unenamored, disenamored, unenamored, I, f I forget. By art, it would be everyone doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just show me 20 people painting the same painting and I'm out. I'm out. Because that's when has that, has that ever been the point of painting? Like that's, mm -hmm. and, and when it was the point, like for example, in Academy, like history showed us that, you know, human beings don't feel comfortable doing that. Like it's not our way. It's not. So the, the coolest of those people broke free. I'm not saying that among those people that wanted to continue, for example, uh, painting in, in academic, um, under academic kind of values, that there were not, you know, hundreds of artists that were incredibly talented. Of course, there's always going to be talent in there. But I think what keeps everything moving, moving somewhere, you know, not moving forward, not moving backward, as many people think, you know, that 20th century did for painting, for example, no, but just moving. We always have to keep moving. We're like this little molecule, that, like this little electron that will die if you don't move. Um, we, we need people to just be unsatisfied by things and to say, yeah, that's fine, but I, that's not me. I just need to find some, you know, some other way of saying this. And, um, and I think that that's it. You know, but how to find that, I have no clue. That's your life. That's what makes your life like worth living or painting through because then that's your responsibility to just find you know these amazing ways to solve problems that may be the same problems that humanity has faced for thousands of years trying when trying to um, configure images like we all go we all try to solve the same things but you know it's not as if the, the problems are going to be new but the way we go about them and, and the places we get, we get to when trying to solve those problems, that's going to be amazing. So, yeah. So when, when you ask those questions, and I'm not saying, like, why do you ask those questions? No, but when you ask those questions, don't ever expect, like, a single answer. Because as soon as somebody gives you a single answer, then, like, so many doors, is, so many doors close up for you. And, and that's not the point. In art, you should like breathe and have every window open and just let every you know let the sun come in through every single one of those windows and bathe you you know that's what you want um anyways that was a little um dramatic of me no no, no i even had to stop painting so oh and i was gonna say that the images are on screen thank so you the one that's down uh me it's luke toyman's yeah and the one that's over there in the palette, uh, there in the palette, mm. it's Had Jorge Gonzalez. Some Nicolas trouble with that, uh, <laughs> yeah. po with the pointing, I noticed. Yeah, because yeah, it's always uh, backwards. So if I point right, I'm pointing left. Right. And if I point left, where do you think I'm pointing? Down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Callum was saying, you can't finish, you can only resolve. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Marciel said, I didn't finish the camper van yet. Whenever I think I finish a painting, I always fidget some more afterwards. But be careful, because you could fidget, you know, until you die. So, it's, uh, I, I, I always give the example of um, Antonio Lopez. Mm -hmm. The royal portrait took... 30 whatever years to paint. Could you look for that one? Antonio Lopez Retrato Real. And it's not the best painting by Lopez. I mean, 
you would think like, oh my God, Antonio Lopez who paints something like, you know, he, he goes to that same spot and he has to paint during that specific season. So mm -hmm. it's only a couple of months during the year. You want me to show it? Yeah, let's show it just okay. to show people like, and, and maybe if, if you could confirm, Danny, how it's long it 20 took. 20 years. I think it was more than that. It is. Uh, I thought it was more than that. Tras I don't know. 20 años trabajando. Okay, so. A espera. I thought it was over 30. But I, I'm, I could be totally mistaken, by the way. Like. But again, I know it's a royal portrait. Sí, sí, 20 años. So 20 years, though. So thank you, Danny. Because I, I, I think I always like over-dramatized um, that, uh, that length. But, um, so 20 years. But I don't think Lopez has any, any other work of art that he spent 20 years on. So when you hear, oh my God, Antonio Lopez is going to work on something for 20 years, you go like, wow, this must be something. And it is a dumb portrait. Like, there's nothing extraordinary about it. Nothing. I mean, it's, a, it's an Antonio Lopez, and that means something. But there's nothing really like, oh, my God, like, this is amazing. No, nothing, nothing. So, so um, yeah, sometimes working on something incessantly doesn't, you know, automatically make it better. Let's see, because it's always super um, Sunny weird. in Philadelphia? Like, no, oh. the... <laughs> The color is weird. Oh, it doesn't matter. Like, whichever one. Okay. Is it? Is there not, like, a picture of it? Like No. A, well, there's this one, but it's, like, from the that's side. That's a terrible photo. Yeah. Too. There's, like, not an official one. That's weird. Wait. Could you imagine working for 20 years on something and you, and you give it... You know, you um, you show it, and they go like, ah, it's "Okay, it's okay." I have some comments. <laughs> yeah. Would you imagine if you give the commission? Oh, I'm sure. Like, well. Oh no, I'm I am sure, a hundred percent sure that he had to change a ton of stuff while painting it. No, I can't believe, but there's not a good uh, picture of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe this one, maybe. Yeah. Well, no, that's terrible. It's just like a big photo. It's like a big family photo, which is the worst that you could say, I think, about like an Antonio Lopez painting, yeah. I feel. No, I'll let everyone go Google it because I, I didn't find one that I was happy with. Uh, Jean Roussin mm. said, mm -mm -mm. I think it's done when adding anything else would not communicate or clarify anything more than it's important. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's very good. Yeah, that's a good way of understanding when to stop. That's very good, yeah. Shade. Yeah, because if you work for like, either five hours or like a week and you and you look at your painting and you go like what am i doing <laughs> like nothing is happening mm. with that week's worth of work nothing then that is a sure sign that you should have stopped yeah but also sometimes you're working for like the an weekend? hour no an hour and you're like i don't want to touch it like i'm done because i wouldn't add anything do you know what the hardest part is sometimes when we don't want to touch it out of fear of messing it up? That that one's super real, too. Yeah. That we go like, I'm going to leave it because if I keep going, I'm going to mess it up. No, but when. And, and sometimes we stop prematurely just because we're afraid of messing it up. That one is super important, too. And we have to recognize that one, too, because. That one is trickier because we can start to convince ourselves that we're done 
but when it but when in fact we what we are is scared yeah shade black said hello everyone hey shade wow this is a different this is different and awesome thank you Liad said next time my doctor tells me i need to work out i will tell her that tell her that nicolas says i'm like a vibrating molecule <laughs> and i'm constantly <laughs> moving <laughs> that sounds a little weird <laughs> I'm a vibrating molecule. William Felipe dice, A mí me pasa mucho que cuando hago algo rápido y sin pretensiones queda mil veces mejor que cuando le dedico todo el tiempo y me concentro. <laughs> Muchas veces pasa eso. A mí también me pasa mucho eso. Cody Winicky was saying, You think he just was stressed out because it was a royal portrait? I don't um, you know that I've never... I've never read or heard if there was like an added pressure i mean he's like a he is a treasure like a national treasure yeah. he's adored so i don't know but i but i'm guessing like you know since there since there's such an enormous tradition of of just incredible painting history in spain he's both acknowledged and respected but I wonder if there was an expectation also from him. So, or maybe it was self-imposed and he was just never happy and never happy, never happy. Um, yeah, because I know that he changed it constantly. Like he would ask for, for pictures and, and other pictures. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I'm, and I love Antonio Lopez. Like, I adore Antonio Lopez. But I think that painting is absolutely forgettable. It's completely forgettable. I mean, it reminds you that official portraits can be like some of the most insipid works of art in, in history. So, can be. I'm not saying all of them are, but... Because I was seeing and he just received one payment... At the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's not like they gave him a million dollars and he wasted all of it. Although I'm sure he got paid handsomely. It, Well, they paid in 1994. Uh, 300 uh, euros. euros. Yeah, 300. Yeah, 300,500 euros. Okay. So. That's, that's pretty good for, uh, you know, mid 90s. Yeah. But yeah, it was a one-time payment because I think we we also were asking, like we were having a con conversation about that painting some time ago. Yeah. And we were thinking if maybe he received more money like while he was painting it. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why it took that much time. But that's, no. That's why I always tell people don't accept money before you mm -hmm. paint something. You're always going to be tied to that work. Like people are always going to have power over you if you receive the money. Get paid afterwards. As soon as they say, we love it. Oh, that's payday. That's like, that's part of the payment. When you know that they're not going to complain anymore, they don't, <laughs> they're not going to make any more changes. Oh my God, that feels better than the money. So get your money then. But if you paint and they never, never pay. Then they don't get the painting. And you lost a lot of time doing it. Yeah, but you don't lose and peace material. of mind. Yeah, but you yeah. don't lose peace of mind. You know, it's it's like I'm willing to to trade one for the other. Much rather have peace of mind than uh, money. Gabriel Pozo dice: Hay una entrevista acá en YouTube en la que Antonio López habla de esa pintura. No parece que tenía mucho temor, honestamente. Liad was saying, could it be that he started the painting and just put it aside for 20 years? No, because he, as you said, he asked for more photos. So he constantly changed and changed. Well, if well, imagine if you're doing a painting that's going to be unveiled as the royal portrait and it's taking you 20 years to make. Like, I would have had hair. Imagine me unveiling a painting, my official portrait, full head of hair how stupid would that look 
So, yeah. So, I'm sure that that was part of it. But it's just strange. I don't know if he... I don't know. And, it, like, I would speculate. But the, if that happened, there's a sort of aura of mystery to that painting. Like, oh, my God, he took so long. It took so long to make. Mm -hmm. Like, he was always uh, dissatisfied with the painting. Like, searching and searching and searching. And, I mean, if you have a patron that allows for eternal searching, oh, God, I'll take that. I'll take that. Doesn't happen quite a bit, but... Leslie Cavazos said, I agree with Danny, charge have at least. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. And Liet said, I agree with Danny, get the money up front, otherwise you can get screwed. Yeah, I don't. That's why I'm terrible at businesses, but... Marciel said, I must admit, the camper van I'm painting, I started it live on the spot in Germany three years ago and hang in my atelier all this time. It's your, uh, it's your Mona Lisa. Jean Roussin mm. said, man, after doing my first mayor commission this year, I have to agree with what Nick just said about taking the money. It just... I just decided not to take any more commissions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that was my, that is my path. Yeah. We've talked about once that uh, they were asking for changes like two years after you. Yeah. Gave it? Official portraits that, that yeah. they were, they asked for changes two years after. Two years I, after you delivered the painting. After they accepted the painting, yeah. uh, might I add. Yeah. Shade said, I'm with Nicolas on this one. You can always sell the work later to someone who loves it. But I mean, if it's like a super personal, like if, like the royal portrait, I mean. Yeah, who, who, who would? Wants? Yeah. Well, a museum, a collection. Yeah. yeah. Well, but a collection if you are Antonio Lopez. Right. Not a collection if you are Daniela Ocampo. I mean, if I do a painting of. Like a super specific subject matter. Yeah. Like in a, maybe a pose that I wouldn't um, love or that I wouldn't choose for my own painting. But if it's, if it's a commission, I accept to do it because that happens with um, a lot of commissions sometimes. And then what would you do with that? I mean... Can I tell you a story? Mm -hmm. So I painted the wife of... A, um, um, what do you call the people that work on the embassy? The, um, um ¿cómo se llaman los que cuando uno dice, ay, me tocó un... Consul? Consul. Pero, ¿cómo se dice consul? Council? No. Consul? Eh. On the consulate. How, what do you call the people that work on embassies? I don't know. Consular. No. It says embassy counselors. Embassy counselor. Okay. Okay. So... So I forget, I don't even remember how I met this uh, guy, this mm -hmm. embassy counselor. But he wanted me to, uh, to paint his wife. He was super nice. U.S. Embassy here in Bogota. Uh, they had given him like a beautiful apartment. So I went there, but they wanted me to paint her from life. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah, of course. So I would go there. I think I went there for three separate Sundays, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this was many years ago. So three separate Sundays, I would go there. And I brought my, you know, uh, prepped, like my prepared linen. It was probably around, how big was that painting? Maybe the size of this drawing table. So what is it? What was it? Pliego? Yeah, no, this is smaller than Pliego. 80 by 60. So I'm going to say 24 by 36. Let's say 24 by 36. And um, or slightly bigger than that, let's say. Or at, at most 30 by 40. Yeah, I can't get hung up on these details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, I would carry, you know, this, this piece of linen that I had prepped and, and, and um, primed really nicely. Set up in this beautiful apartment. And she had like a huge... Um, um, a huge I, uh, I'm so mad that I didn't paint her on that because initially I, I wanted she had this enormous hat mm -hmm. like flop like a floppy hat that would go 
down to her like um almost like her butt it was enormous it was beautiful anyways and i wanted to do that but they were like no no, no that looks like a caricature so and they showed me a painting that would that had been done of her grandmother so it looked like a very modern painting i'm sure that it that that portrait had been painted maybe in the 30s or 40s probably mm -hmm. so they were like we want to have a companion for this portrait so you know if you could kind of use some of the colors or you know kind of like the same vibe yeah, kind of make them match right but the but the portrait was super modernist so um you know there you know and I, and I, at the time i was a very traditional painter and i was like okay i'll i'll do my best so I started, you know, I started the painting. I was very, very happy with the painting. And I would leave the painting over there for them to see. And it was super nice. He was a good model, though. You know, it's tough because they wanted it from life. So I couldn't take pictures. But she was never comfortable posing. But that sounds like an excuse, you know. Um, she moved quite a bit. So I would have to tell her, like, super respectfully, oh, could you stay still for, like, five minutes? Like, give me five minutes. Because she was always chatting and moved, like, moving her head, chatting. Like, her husband was there. He would play the banjo. He was like super good playing the banjo. But um, so it was a really good experience. It was just a wonderful painting experience. Tough, but it was wonderful. So I would leave every day thinking, oh, that was nice. That was a super nice painting. So I would come back and they were happy and they were posing. They would give me comments like every day that I was there, but nothing major. And um, last day I was there, because now I'm thinking that it was four sessions, I feel. So it was four weekends. So the last day I'm there, um, I, I really do feel like the painting is a, it's a really cool painting. And I am, you know, I'm there. Like, I, I'm, you know, it's, it's like, oh, my God, that this is like a good portrait. I think they're going to be super happy. And I remember me placing it right next to the grandmother's portrait and thinking, wow, these look really nice together. So I felt... We did it. Like, mm -hmm. that's the that's what they wanted me to paint. And I'm super happy. So I take the painting and I say, you know what? I think I'm done. And they were like, oh, really? And I give them the painting and I tell them, and this is, I'm, I'm being super honest here. And I tell them, you know, there's like a beautiful sadness to your look no. that I've seen it and they took every it single back? painting. Yeah, that I've seen it every single time. And I love it. And I think that that's what's in your grandmother's portrait. And that I think it's in this portrait. But it's not like caricature sadness. But it's just a, no, I don't I know, get it, like but weight. I, but I don't like know that, why that's something that a lot of hate. people would take super bad. So, yeah. exactly. So. Like, like that's an artist I, thing to yeah, say. Yeah, that yeah, sounds and I, weird. But, but yeah, and I would say it 100 out of 100 times. Yeah. I'm not afraid of that. No, but yeah. as soon as I said it. Like everything changed, everything. <gasps> and I remember that they went off to the, like the side and they started talking and he came back. Like I was, I was setting up to leave. I was going to leave and, um, and I got paid. Like, I remember I got paid like 2000 bucks, something like that. Mm -hmm. They even paid me like in dollars. I remember cause he had like okay. dollars. I don't know why, but anyways, um, and they come back. And they tell me, you know, we decided we're going to do something. And I was like, sure, what, what is it? And they were like, you can keep the painting because no. we really don't feel that the best way to portray her is through sadness. Like she's a super lively person. So, you know, that's not the person that she is. And in my mind, I was like, what? And when she was posing, I she had like this very kind of old school look to her mm -hmm. like very like there's an oldness like i don't know how to express it like old soul look to her mm -hmm. that i thought was beautiful because yeah. it felt timeless like it's the sort of person that if you would if you took a picture of her and you put it in black and white yeah, like you would never another... know when yeah. she's from yeah, like yeah, yeah. it was amazing it was um it was really really interesting and and they gave the painting back to me and they told me you keep the painting and I was like, what? What am I going to? And but they said, but here's the money because we had an amazing time and it was super enjoyable. But we just don't feel like we want the painting. So super backhanded compliment because I was like, we love the painting, but we hate it. 
but here's the money because maybe they felt bad about yeah, it. Yeah, because you went uh, for yeah. weekends. And so. I have to, because I didn't have a car, I remember at that moment. So I remember, Danny, that I stepped out of the apartment with the painting and I just put it right next to the nearest garbage can that I mm -hmm. saw. Because I was like, I don't know why I was offended. Maybe nowadays I would feel like, no, I'm going to use the linen at least. Like, what am I going to do? I'm not going to throw like a perfectly nice piece of linen. Um, but I got so hurt. Like, yeah. I remember walking and feeling like, and I had the money. It was like 2,000 bucks and I was younger and I was like, this is great money. But it just didn't feel right. Like, it didn't yeah. matter. I'm sure that other people could be like, hell yeah, I got paid. They don't want a portrait. Who cares? Like, like I, I got paid. Like, I can resell it. And yeah, I got paid. I can use the, like I said, like, I could use the linen. Yeah. That's, you know, win-win. Um, but I, I was, like, kind of destroyed inside because there was nothing about that painting that frustrated me. Like, nothing. I, I even felt like, yes, I did, like, yes, I did the painting that, you wanted to do that well that i wanted to do but that i thought they wanted also yeah. and and that it fit perfectly with the like as a companion portrait with the one that they had and it was so like sad that they were like no you know you said that one word like i that spoke about the sadness, painting which is and it's like absurd. how could i ever portray myself as somebody who's sad and i and I mean, nowadays, when I think about it, it's very telling, like, of human beings just... Being so afraid of, of that. Of being vulnerable. Yeah. Of saying, like, oh, yeah, in this portrait, I look human. Yeah. No, they always want to be something else when they're painted. Um, so it destroyed me. And, and that's the only time that I think I've ever gotten paid, but somebody has rejected what I, what, what I did. But I think I would be super sad. I I also, put it I, like I would be. I leaned the painting. Who who knows? Maybe somebody took the painting. I would love to. Like when I die, if maybe they show they me went the real of my life, I would ask God if like could we take the camera? Could you show me the camera from that day? <laughs> and could we see like the history of that painting? You mm -hmm. know who took it or maybe what happened? they took it. Do you imagine? No, or maybe they were super offended and they were driving off the next day and they saw it right next to the garbage. But but they can't feel bad about that. No. Like they no, were the No, cuz they ones, were rejecting what like, you did. They, they would have like, done that when I was if I would have just walked out, they would have thrown it away. They would have been like, "What do we do with this? Hmm. Should we throw it away?" And they probably were like, "Yeah, let's throw it away." Uh, so so they shouldn't feel bad about it. Yeah. But I felt horrible. I, it's one of those days that I felt like that one I remember. That one I carry with me, unfortunately. But uh, mm. I remember it as a day that I was like, oh, this feels wrong and this, this feels bad. Like, I don't know. It's just one of those tough days, I feel. Yeah, Marciel said, great story, sad but great experience. Yeah, I think it was a, a really cool, cool experience. Uh Jean Roussin said, Ooh, la la. This, ho this whole story makes me genuinely feel like I want to cry. <laughs> no, yeah, when you were talking, I was super sad because I thought how I would felt. I felt bad. You should have that. seen me. Yeah. Like, I, they were living in, they lived in Rosales. Mm -hmm. So I had to walk down to yeah. Septima, to the Septima to take a bus. And I remember that going back feeling like just kind of worthless, kind yeah. of, you know. And feeling, like, betrayed, I felt. Like, tell me. Tell me at the beginning. Yeah. Like, no, because I don't you think can't say, like, it was the image. Could you which imagine, is like, more absurd. a word it's what you changing said. an image? Yeah. Exactly. The it's image like, was the same. I can't imagine them talking, like, oh, the artist uh, said that he portrayed uh, sadness. So that changed the image in their head which is absurd i mean yeah like a word made a word made destroyed everything made the way they saw they perceived they, the, they image, perceived the yeah. image like changed it was just so peculiar i don't know never happened and it's never happened again William Felipe dice, uy, no, yo me hubiera sentido igual y después quemo los billetes, jaja, <laughs> bueno, no, 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 la plata sí no, pero, no, dijo, quemo los billetes, jaja, <laughs> bueno, no, no, la plata no, yo, o sea, pero, pero lo chistoso es que la plata en ese momento no importó, o sea, no, no era como, no, pues uy, sí. pues me pagaron, chao, hasta luego, gracias, 
Como que uno igual tiene su ego y su, su cariño por las cosas que hace. Pues además si era una pintura que sentías que todo estaba fluyendo bien. Sí. O sea, cuando es algo que a uno le gusta, pues es mucho más difícil. O, o sea, uno dice, sí, lo logré. Y de repente es como, eh, no. Sí, o por sea, eso, porque perdido. si, hubiera, no, si tú hubieras dicho, no. uy, no, tengo que acabar esto, está hediondo y te pagan. Y te dicen, quédese la, tú dices, uy, bueno, gracias, chao. Pero pues... O uno, o, o por lo menos uno decir, me quedo de onda y me dicen, oiga, ¿no nos gusta? Uno dice, sí, sí la verdad, sí, sí, sí. está o sea, horrible. Qué pena. Por eso, no pero... Fue, no fue uno de mis mejores días, qué pena, sí, tienen Pero toda la uno razón. sentir que todo está saliendo como uno quiere que salga, mm. como que cada decisión que está tomando está saliendo perfecto, todo. Sí. Y luego, ¿esto? Uy, no. Sí, Muy bastante feo. difícil. Ahora Cadabra dice, Nicolás, ¿tienes planeado dar talleres presenciales este año? ¿Sería posible sin interrumpir este proyecto? Eh, sí, sí. Eh, sí. Próximamente hacemos, pues próximamente es abril, eh, vamos a ir a Menorca. Sí, pero, pues a ver, yo hago la aclaración. Eh, se interrumpe en el sentido en el que, pues mientras estamos en el taller no hay transmisiones. Ah, sí. Pero pues... Porque... Pero eso ha pasado en los últimos dos sí, años. No, no, también. no, por lo que decían, ¿sería posible sin interrumpir este proyecto? Ah, no, no. Y, y no, porque pues no podríamos llevar todo para transmitir. O sea, el año, sí, no. El año pasado también hubo semanas donde, donde se tuvo que interrumpir, pero pues es como la vida, o sí, sea. No, y es una semana, dos semanas, o sea. Sí, máximo son dos semanas. Sí, sí, y, no, sí. y normalmente le, le contamos a la gente y la gente se pone muy contenta por nosotros. Y subimos historias y de pronto podríamos subir TikToks. No. Para que la gente sienta mm, que estamos mm, presentes. Que se pueden unsubscribe. No, que las 34 personas que nos sigan sepan que ahí estamos. Siempre. 35, perdóname. Mm, qué pena. Sí, yo leyendo mal mis cifras. Oye, subimos. Eh, Un número, sí. Wow. Dos. Robin y otra persona. Mm. Liet said, it's interesting how different contexts can change the perception of things. And I'm sorry that happened, Nicolás. Yeah, I mean, learning experience. So, we grow from all of those. But this year was, well, last year, I, I, and, and Danny knows this, was the first year because I usually get paid very well. But it was the first year that I didn't, that the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs approached me to paint the chancellor. Mm -hmm. And I said no. Yeah. First time in my life, I said no. Um, and it's always very good money. Very, very good money. And I said no. Because, I don't know. I just didn't, didn't want to go through uh, the hassle again. So, yeah. Danny, something terrible is happening. What? Well, I'm liking it like this. And And why you know, terrible? Well, it's always like the, the super tough thing, like, oh my god, is it enough? Is it not enough? Like what am I just convincing myself that it's enough? I mean But it's so different than everything I do, but I like it because it is different from everything else that I do. You choose the perfect uh day because we've been talking about that today yeah. i mean you are the only judge of knowing i know because that's why i said sometimes me? no i Jesus. trust you no why that's blinded. your first mistake i mean i trust you blindly so but no i was gonna say that's why i said sometimes you paint for half an hour and you're done sometimes you paint for a year And you're never done because it's a terrible thing you're Sometimes painting. it's 20 years for an <laughs> yes. official portrait. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. I like it. It feels, you know what it feels like? Like a poster, like an yeah. old school poster. And you know what's cool? Oh, I like it. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, because, you know, people, I mean, they see the screen, but they can't see how big it is. Yeah, it's I think, nice. Yeah, because I think. It's the poster size. Yeah, not, not poster. Like the size of the of the paper you choose yeah it 
gives it so much yeah, to yeah. that image, to that specific image. I'm going to stop. So I love it. And I love that you decided to yeah, stop. Yeah, this is one of those days that every, like the conversation that we're having, memories that are being kind of, uh, uh, that, that have bubbled, uh, bubbled up. Um, th everything is telling me, and, and you know, th it's stuff that we've been talking about. Uh, e even with Callum, we were talking about before this painting, um, about finishing something. Mm. Um, it's just, it just feels right. It almost feels like those little conversations that we've been having are like little seeds that were planted yeah. and they just kind of, you know, maybe everything's trying to with a tell painting. you to know yeah. when to stop. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it never forces you to do anything. But no. I feel that when those thoughts are there, they're always like, you know what? You could. You could. It's always a choice. No, but you it's not like it here. they're not making you stop, but they're trying to make you know when to stop. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very happy. So I'm yeah, going like to say it. I'm going to stop. Okay? Yeah. I like yeah, it too. I like it. Yeah, I Shade Black said it's beautiful. Marcial said that's the theme of today, time. Popping Tales said hermoso. Awesome. Thank you guys. That, that's awesome. Y mi prima dice Coco. Y después prima. de esa experiencia prima. <laughs> 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 y después de esa experiencia ¿Cuál ha sido la pintura con la que te hayan recibido como el regalo más increíble de la vida? Mm. ¿Como alguna comisión? Uf, no sé. O sea, lo que pasa es que cuando son comisiones, si, que, si la gente queda satisfecha, uno queda feliz. O mm. sea, uno siempre queda feliz. Porque la única medida con la que uno puede... Mm, puede como... Mm, Darse una idea de si un trabajo de una comisión es exitoso, es si la persona está contenta. O sea, puede... De pronto uno dice, ah, la pintura pudo ser más chévere. Y apenas uno la entrega, si le salen lágrimas, uno dice, pues, no, están felices. O sea, es literalmente lo que querían y están orgullosísimos. Pues entonces la pintura es como que cumplió su función. Eh... Y lo opuesto también puede ser cierto. Una pintura puede ser extraordinaria y si no cumple su función, entonces no es una buena comisión. Eh, no, entonces cada vez, si la gente es contenta, si la gente está contenta con lo que uno hace, ese es, ese es un sentimiento súper bonito cuando, cuando uno, o sea, y más cuando uno lo contratan para algo. Si no, también es súper chévere cuando uno, por ejemplo, expone algo o, y, y lo socializa de alguna u otra forma, y si alguien le dice, oiga, yo necesito esa pintura porque me fascinó, eso es también súper bonito, eso es súper lindo. Eso, yo, yo siempre he dicho que, yo sé, o sea, comprarle algo a alguien no, no es como la única manera en que uno puede mostrar que uno aprecia a una persona, en específico a un artista, pero para nosotros es chévere, es súper es bonito y no tiene que ser, o sea, y no es acerca de plata. Y cuando sino... la gente... Porque hay mucha gente que nos ha escrito mensajes mm. súper bonitos. Sí, sí. Como sí. esta pintura en específico sí. me recuerda a tal cosa de mi sí, familia. Una, sí, unas historias. O, sí, cosas. Como, unas historias como super. paralelas a la pintura que, que hacen que para ellos la pintura tenga una vida uh -huh. mucho más como grande. Un significado más grande. Sí, sí. De, del que uno le pudo haber dado cuando uno, cuando uno estaba, pues, de pronto enmarcando la pintura bajo un. Un pretexto de un ejercicio. Sí, sí, sí. Daniel, Daniel Crute yeah. said, just leave it. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I needed that extra little, you know, shove of courage. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm convinced now. Cody, I'm super happy. Cody Winicky said, I think it's cool that you're calling it. It's one thing to talk about the potential of stopping at an unexpected time. But to actually be aware enough to do it is special. I like where it is at. Which was, I have to say, which was not the aim of this painting. Not at all. I just, I thought I was going to do an oversized head. So that's, that was my intent. I don't think it's cool when you go like, hey, I'll show you guys how to stop early. What? That, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Because then you would force Oh, then, I, then it would look, I promise you guys, that would then be none of this would work. No. Like, I, I wouldn't, like, my hand wouldn't be able to do this because I would feel so much pressure to put, like, definitive strokes that my hand would cramp up. Like, I wouldn't know how to do that. Yeah. 
So this was because I had the liberty of not knowing what I wanted to do. And I said, I'm just, I'll be like, now that, you know, this between us. Um, when I did this, I said I was being super playful. Mm -hmm. I was, go I went like, okay, you know, this is the angle of the mouth. I could do that. And with a lot of like uh, Du Buffet's pictures that I saw in the internet today, um, I, I always looked at the teeth. He's always like either smiling or grinning or he mm -hmm. has this kind of like, I don't know. He has this mouth that feels, I don't know. It's just there's, the, I got like a weird feeling from his mouth, but like a good weird, mm -hmm. like in the sense that good weird as if, you know, like teeth, interesting. Yeah, yeah, teeth sometimes can be like, oh, avoid them at all costs. Yeah. I mean, like, there's there is a reason why like only 0.01% of portraits in all of history are painted um, not, you know, smiling. Yeah, because they look like oh, chiclets all oh, the time. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, painting a smile is one of those things that can bite you in the ass mm -hmm. like so quickly. So it was really funny but because I thought, I, I thought, I thought the thief. <laughs> I saw the <laughs> teeth and I said, oh, that could be sort of like um, um, an important feature in the uh, in the painting that th there's a gesture to them that is very, very important that I don't know if I'm going to get to it because I'm horrified of painting teeth, but that can be something that's that's special. And then I landed on this photo, but I, you know, I was far more concerned with like, it had a super cool nose and I love to paint noses. So I was like, okay, I'm going to give structure to the nose. And then the eyes reminded me of, um, of that Repin painting. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, maybe I can, you know, um, like the, uh, for people that don't know the Ivan the Terrible painting. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe I can, you know, just paint the anguish of that look, that like absolute terror of that look almost. And um, and that's where the painting's gonna be, like up here and I could just kind of block in the mouth and that's it. And when I was doing this, I was being super playful because I thought, oh, let me do this. Because if not, then I'll just paint the painting that I wanted to paint, which, uh, which was just do a block in of a mouth and that's it, you're done, like you're fine. Make the mouth. Um, Paint it well, but uninteresting. Like, paint it well as if it's there, but, it, you know, it's not there. And, um, and and as soon as I did it, that's why I kind of stopped and I told you guys, oh, my God, I'm loving this. And, I, you know, that's those, those are some of the things that you're like, you know, when you are truly not expecting something from your painting hmm. and something happens, yeah. that feeling cannot be replicated. You cannot. Yeah. You can't do that the next painting. Or, you know, you can't bottle that up and say, you know what I have to do for the next paintings? The same. Yeah. Yeah. D you can't do that. Or as soon, or, or yeah, you can try to do it. But what you're going to um, inevitably end up doing is, is just taking something that is beautiful. And I'm going to call this beautiful. Not because it's beautifully painted. It's just a beautiful little happening thing in my painting. So I'm going to call it beautiful. I'm not deeming it beautiful for everyone else. But I, I think something nice happened for me here. So if you take something that's beautiful for you and you just murder it by, you know, doing a thousand versions of that in a, a thousand upcoming paintings, then you might as well have never painted it. And you might as well never call it beautiful because you ruined it. So the nicest thing to do when something, you know, kind of cool that is um, that feels like it only has a home here happens is to never touch it again to say this happened it taught me things but if it really taught me things and if i was really paying attention part of the lesson that it's telling me is like don't do this a hundred times now after you know this because if you do that then this one you know the one that made you see that opened your eyes it's going to be meaningless. Yeah. And you don't want the thing that was beautiful to be meaningless. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's one of those paintings that it's like, I'm so, ha I'm so happy that it happened because, you know, chances are, no, not chances are, like, it's never going to happen again. You can't, like, put, you can't have in my mind, like, the same thoughts that we've had. You can't have the same conversation the same willingness to paint du buffet mm -hmm. the same like everything was building up to doing something that 
it's almost like your body and your mind were saying, oh my God, we're getting ready for this. We're getting ready for this. Like we're training for this without noticing we're training for this. And suddenly you're ready and you do it, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be good, bad. It doesn't matter. But you do it. You trained for something. You did it. Like that's never going to repeat itself. So yeah. it's kind of nice. I, I feel that as a testament of that precise moment, painting... I think there's nothing quite as beautiful as painting. Yeah. And it's not about capturing time. I don't think painting can capture... No, well, painting can't chase nature and capture time and encapsulate time. That's a very... I mean, th that is a very cliche way of seeing painting. And it's totally fine, by the way. But I think it just understands time in a very different way. It's almost like just everything gels together and then this painting sort of exists. And I'm not saying that the fact that it exists is this miracle and that's why painting is amazing. No, no, no. It's just that it sort of evidences that precise kind of, you know, moment where everything is clashing together. Mm -hmm. And that's super cool. So it's not just about, oh, I painted, you know, I wanted to do a painting of 8.03 at night and then I'm trying to grab nature and it's ever-changing and, you know, painting allows me to just, freeze time in a beautiful way yeah sure but you know it's not quite as i would say simple as that even though chasing nature is one of the toughest things to do but there's much more than that you know whenever i say there's much more to painting than you know all these things that we you know um never tire of of, of surrounding painting with i think that there's so much more and i don't know this is one of those nice days so i'm gonna leave yeah. it Yeah, Cody Winicky said, I didn't mean that you forced it. I realized that wasn't the point. Oh, no, 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 Cody. no. We were talking oh, about... Because yeah. we loved uh, your comment. Yeah, and yeah, And that's yeah, why we were talking about how it worked because it wasn't forced. Oh, like we yeah, were, yeah, yeah. Like we were... Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? With reiterando. you. Yeah, yeah, just repeating or yeah. iterating. Like re re reiterating? You well, could say iterating or reiterating. Reiterating. Which is what kind you of because iterating is enough. And reiterating is like We were re re iterating. <laughs> re, re, re Rihanna. Uh, William no, Felipe Cody, dice, I, Oh, I'm sorry, Cody. No, I just want to say Cody. No, no, no. We I I don't think either Danny or myself took it uh, took what you said uh, the wrong way. So don't worry about that. Like not at all. William Felipe dice, "Uf, sí, tremenda pintura." Alejandro Morales dice, wow, Nicolás me gusta mucho. Siempre imagino las pinturas de, de Nicolás con un poco de mate, con un montón de materia. Gabriel Pozo dice, súper chévere como la pintura de hoy ilustra muy bien los temas que hablamos hoy. Eh, Michael Soros said, love every part of this painting. Eh, Jean Roussin said, mm, oh la after la. getting us with that diplomat story, I think you owe us a TikTok dance. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'm doing it. You should see my hips, my legs. Yeah, I see them. <laughs> And what's the title? Wow, Macarena now. My, what? Stop <laughs> it. That's uh, my last TikTok dance. First <laughs> and last, it's called. Uh, Roslyn said, this is gorgeous. Thank you, Always Rosalind. stunning. Thank you, Roslyn. Alejandro Morales dice, esta pintura me recuerda un poco las atmósferas del maestro Reverón. Oh, wolf. Monstruo. Monstro, monstro pintor. Eh, ZD dice, eh, ya para cerrar, si sí, ¿sí te parece. Ya para cerrar. Para cerrar. La Z y la, la R. L. La R. Pues es que Z R. Z no. D. La persona que está hablando. Z D. Ah, entonces la Z y la D. Dice. Disculpa na, la pregunta. Na, 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 na. Disculpa <risa> la pregunta fuera del tema. Sobre la pintura escoger del Kickstarter. Sí. ¿Tiene que ser un artista famoso o no. cuáles son las posibilidades? Todas. Sí, no, por eso Z incluso habíamos hecho el chiste, eh, lo que pasa es que lo hicimos en inglés. Ah, sí, Z Que no. es como, ay, es, es que mi, mi, mascota pinta. mi mascota es mi pintor favorito. Pues, o sea, pues no, sí, no se trata de pintar una mascota. Sí. Pero... No, pero sí, o sea, eh, una persona acá en la transmisión que nos dijo, eh, quiero saber, yo soy artista, quiero saber si... ¿Sí? Eh, la pintura puede ser mía, entendemos, claro. 100%. Claro que sí. Eh, y bueno. lo que pasa es que tenemos que, por, créanme, es más como por logística, toca esperar a que termine el, el, la campaña y nosotros inmediatamente nos ponemos nos en contacto con las sí, personas. Sí, sí. 
Porque es que si lo hacemos ahora, por ejemplo, yo me puedo, yo puedo comenzar a trabajar, pero es que las personas pueden retirar, eh, pueden retirarse de la campaña cuando quieran, uh -huh. hasta el último día. Entonces, si por ejemplo yo empiezo a pintar esos rewards y, es, y, y hago los de dos, o sea, dos personas y ahí trabajo resto y estoy feliz que me mandaron a hacer X y después dicen, ay, oiga, no, eh, la verdad ya no quiero. Y yo digo, bueno, pero pues... Sí, entonces sí, hay que esperar, ¿Esperar? pero después de eso eh, ah, no, nos ponemos eso en me... contacto con todos sí. para también tener todas... Eh, las imágenes, todos sí, los sí, artistas, sí. Pues, todas las listas claras Si necesitamos claras de imágenes, todos. nos tienen que mandar imágenes. Si no, eh, la idea es que confíen en mí y que, y que lo que se ha hecho durante estos años pues sirva de guía para saber qué para tipo saber de pintura. cómo sí. es la pintura que uno va a resolver. Y qué eso. tipo de referencia elegirías sí, sí, exacto, también. Eso. Por eso digo que yo creo que queda claro que ahí en el Kickstarter dice como la... Eh, interpretación interpretación del personal de sí. Nicolás Como que ahí es donde uno se hace una expectativa como, como ahí es donde uno tiene que ser un poco también serio Como digamos comprador Si yo fuera quien va a apoyar Yo digo me gusta la idea Pero me gusta porque me pongo en las manos de esa persona Tengo la confianza de ponerme en las manos Y yo ojalá me he ganado como la confianza de las personas Con, con los trabajos que hemos hecho Entonces Sí, e igual lo que decíamos eh, creo que hace unas transmisiones mm. Que lo chévere es que yo creo que La gente tiene Más de 400 y pico de pinturas sí. Para saber para cómo Para hacerse una idea Exacto, Exacto. Sí, sí eh, Pero y, bueno y yo lo que puedo ah. asegurar es que Está dentro O sea, todo lo que voy a hacer Está, está dentro, dentro de, de esas ese expectativas rango. Exacto O sea, si, si me dicen Haga y yo después a todo el mundo le mando Es una cabecita como de, de bolita rayitas mm. Eh, ahí sí entiendo que la gente sí. dijera, oiga, nos robó, pero no. O obviamente va a estar dentro de la, lo que he hecho durante todo este proyecto. Sí. Listo. Yeah, so we're done. Thank you everyone awesome. for yeah, joining awesome us. Yeah, awesome day. Super happy for yeah. me uh, today. So I'm, I'm, I hope that, that we gave it enough context so that we can see the painting for, for, you know, when I say for what it is, is for everything that's surrounding the making of the painting also. Yeah. I think that that's one of the coolest things about having um, just a, a place where we can voice those things mm -hmm. so that we know how much more there is to painting than just making a painting. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. So, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. This yeah. was a super cool day. Thank you, everyone. Remember, we have a book campaign. Kickstarter is uh, pinned in the comments. You can check it out. And we have a TikTok. That's why Nicolas is uh, doing Ipsy Dipsy Spider. <laughs> like a <There>. Hadouken. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, also Something. we have our Painted Lives uh, Instagram. And we have our... Uh, no, Instagram, no. Our Painted Lives TikTok. And we oh have God, our Instagram. Producer. Daniela producer. and Nicolas, if you want to check them out. Thank awesome. you, everyone, for joining us. Bye.